I'm, I don't. I, I had thought I had uh, indicated that I had uh, excluded or denied the state's request to admit it. I just wanted to get that clarified. But you're saying you hadn't requested to. Uh, we we haven't moved. We were we were authenticating it. Oh, I see. I see. What you're saying. We haven't moved for admission. Yet. What is that number? Quadruple G. Yeah, we're not to quadruple Gs yet, Your Honor. But you prohibited us from yeah. using the second page, but. Numerous witnesses have testified to the first page. Well, I, I'm not sure whether you want to argue it again, why this would be uh, admissible. Uh, uh, but I, I didn't see the relevance of it. Yeah, Your Honor, Mr. Newcomb is the one who first brought up um, I was asking him basically if in hindsight anything had happened that made him, um, you know, look back now and think that they were guilty. And he indicated that George had posted this on his Facebook, this one-eyed wolf, and he immediately thought of that. And um, I asked him why, and he said because Kenneth was shot uh, through the eye. And then they brought up the picture to show Mr. Newcomb and have him identify, is this the picture you saw? Yes. Um, and then, again, we brought it in through uh, Ms. Eveslage, and the only objection was to the responses. Um, that was not the objection. Is well, that back. was what the court sustained. That was not the only objection. Um, judge, this photograph is not a one-eyed wolf. What? It's, it's a wolf with two different colored eyes, all right, which is, it, that's very true. Um, so it's been mischaracterized. No, that's what is obvious by looking at the picture. One eye is, if I could look at Is it, is it a, a wolf or a malamute? I'm, and I'm not sure if it's a canine of some sort. If here's one eye is blue and one eye is gold or yellow, it's not one eye. Yeah, what's interesting, interesting though is like Chris Newcomb's testimony was that as the investigation was going on, after the defendant had come back from Alaska, at some point he saw something that was like, ooh, you know, it, it triggered his, well, the, maybe these guys are involved in this. Ms. Kaneva asked, what was that? It was a Facebook profile picture of what he thought was a one-eyed wolf. The defendant at that point brought that picture in and said, is this what you're talking about? Because it's not clear, it's clearly not a one-eyed wolf. It's a of some sort. All right. I do see a date on this, October 4, 2018, I think is the date which would put it, what, approximately two and one half years after the homicides. It doesn't appear to me to be an animal with one eye, and I, I had forgotten you said this was just after they came back from Alaska. I, I and even though the witness Mr. Newcomb may have in, interpreted this as being something uh, that's one person's interpretation, and I, I, I'm going to order that it be excluded. Thank you, Judge. We're ready to proceed. All right, so we're, is the state ready to have the jury brought up? I probably should, uh, let me think, of, if you're, he's on direct and there's opportunity to cross here. So again, I think the state should have an opportunity to cross. I'm not going to limit their cross-examination of that, but I, I, to the extent that that's being offered in their, in their case in chief, I'm finding it at this point that I see no relevance in it. 
Yeah, but, but if you're asking that they not be allowed to use it in cross, I, I'm not going to limit their cross. Uh, it is a communication. I'm sorry. It is a communication. I don't know what you mean by communication. Well, isn't it between uh, Angela and uh, and the defendant? Well, Angela does respond to it. When he, when he posted it, there's a response from Angela, and then he responds back. Well, it's a, it's a photograph, a clip art, I would say, uh, is page one. Well, I'm, I'm not going to deny their opportunity to cross him on it. He, his response are his responses, and there'll be a request to admit it at that point. But I haven't admitted it now because I don't see the relevance of it. See, we're in an awkward position because normally my client would only... You may be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. It's good to see you all here. Um, you'll recall that uh, the defendant had been called as a witness by the defense, uh, or we say out of order in the sense that the state has not rested its case at this point. The, the defense was uh, continuing to uh, uh, examine the, de the defendant on direct examination. That's the point at which we left off yesterday evening. Um, so let me ask the state, is the state ready to proceed today? Yes, Your Honor. Is the defense ready to proceed? Yes, All right, you may resume your direct examination. Thank you. Good morning, George. How are you? Good. All right. Remember to keep your voice loud enough so the jury can hear you. There's a microphone there. Don't understand a question? Just say so. Let me let me just interject here too. Uh, this is direct. This is a uh, continuous testimony, Mr. Wagner. So the oath that was administered yesterday is still applicable today. You're still under oath to tell the truth. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, yesterday, George, uh, I had you identify a few photographs. I need to go back over those because. I realized I have two exhibits with the same number, so I need to clean that up. Um, you remember I showed you this photograph, I believe that's your brother, and I called it Wagner Exhibit 53. Do you remember that? Yes. And I also showed you a picture from your wedding, and I also called that Wagner, Wagner Exhibit 53. Do you understand? Yes. That? I'm going to remark your wedding photo to make it 53-1. Do you recognize that? Yes. That's your wedding photo? Yes. All right, a couple more things here. Showing you what was previously marked as Wagner from the 37. I think this is the only 37 we have. Do you recognize that? Yes. Who is that? My father. Do you know where that picture was taken? At the house on Peterson in the kitchen. Now, George, uh, did you use Facebook? On and off. Tell us about how often you used it. What were the circumstances you used Facebook? Mainly just to get on Marketplace or Diesel Groups. or. What, what's Marketplace? It's like a advertising thing you buy and sell parts and stuff on it what would you use it for buy and sell parts parts yes what kind of parts diesel truck parts All right. would you use it for anything else uh, marketplace not not generally okay uh, did you use the messenger service that's available through Facebook yes to talk to my friends with right. was one of your friends Frankie wrote yes right. did you ever um, block Frankie from being a friend? Not to my knowledge. Now, 
Did you have any experience with your mother? Uh, Objection, Your Honor. To leave. Please select this witness testify. I'm sorry, what was the objection? He's leading, Your Honor. Oh, leading question. I don't think I finished the question, Judge. Well, Let me finish your question. Give him the answer to the question. With respect to Facebook, did you ever uh, know of your mother to objection, use your account Your Honor. or not? Again, oh, let me know the answer. Well, I'll put over the objection later. Right not to my knowledge. Did you ever know whether your mother obtained a password? Not to my knowledge. I'm going to show you what has been marked as Wagner Exhibit 55. Have you ever take a look at that? Look through that. Have you ever seen that? Not the contents of it, no, but I've seen the front of it before. You've seen the cover? Yes. But you've never seen the contents? No. Do you remember where you saw it? Um, it used to be in the kitchen of my mother's house. All right. Now, do you know whether your mother used Facebook? Yes. All right. Did she talk to you about that? On and off. Okay. Do you know whether Jake used Facebook? Yes. Do you know if he used it often or not? I don't know how often he used it, no. What about your father? To my knowledge, I don't even think he has an account. Are you... Let me ask you this. I'm showing you Wagner Exhibit 33 and 34. Do you know what these are? Have you ever seen? Yes, I know what they are. What is that? Uh, it's a GoFundMe account my brother made. When did you first become aware of that? Years ago. What do you mean by that? Like right after he made it. And what, what's your understanding? What do you know about it? All I know is he made one. Right. Had you actually seen the contents of it? Before it showed up in Discovery, no. So, you had your own Facebook account, right? Yes. All right. Showing you what's previously been marked as State's Exhibit Quadruple G. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is that? It is a picture from my Facebook. All right. Describe that picture for the jury. It's just a picture of a wolf with a tattoo over its eye and a miscolored eye. And what? A miscolored eye. Okay. Take a look at that. Tell the jury what color each eye is. Uh, one's more like an ice blue and the other one's more like an amber. Okay. And look at the second page of that document. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is that? It's a uh, text between me and my mother. All right. And what did you text? Um, I sent her what don't like it. I'm sorry? It says what don't like it. And what's her response? My mother says really. All right. What's that picture about? <clears throat> She only says really because when I was a child, I was terrified of them. Terrified of? Of wolves. All right. And when did you place that on your, when did you place that photograph in connection with your Facebook account? Do you remember? I don't know the date. Can I look at it? Please. Um, October 4th of 2018. All right. Does that photograph have anything to do at all with the murders in this case? No. Were you ever over at Left Fork Road when, when Ken got killed? No. Were you even in the area? No. Let's talk about Beth again for a moment. Did you trust Beth? No. Why not? Multiple different reasons. Okay, take your time and explain. 
um, reason one, um, when she first broke up with my brother and then got back with him, I just thought it was weird that somebody who met a complete stranger would want to be with somebody who was accused of what we were being accused of. All right. Were there other reasons? Yes. Um, the second reason was uh, she had come up with a story about her childhood that she and her brothers and her mother was a part of some cult for some church in Texas, and I had to guess the church ended up selling kids to sex slavery or something like that. All right. Was there any other reason? Uh, the other one, my kid had told me that she was uh, telling him that you shoot people with ARs. Not for the truth of the matter, Judge. It's just, Say it again. It's not for the truth of the matter. It's just to explain his lack of trust. Well, I'm going to allow it. The other one was I came home from work one week, and my son said that Beth had told him that you shoot bad people with AR-15s. Did you have an AR-15? Yes. Did your son know you had an AR-15? Yes. You showed your son your guns, right? Yes. You didn't hide them or anything? No. And so we heard some recordings, secret recordings that were made in the r &L truck. We heard those last week, right? Yes. Do you remember the discussions between you and your brother, you and your mother, about Beth? I remember multiple of them. Right, there was more than one. Right? Yes. And why did you want Beth out of the house in Southwest? I just didn't feel my son was safe around her. Did you want to kill her? No. What did you want? I just wanted her to move out of the house. <clears throat> Let's talk about Sophie for a moment. That's Jake's. Jake and Hannah's daughter, right? Yes. Did she have a nickname? Suds. How did she get that nickname? I gave it to her when she was a baby. Explain what happened. She uh, was playing one day in a bucket full of water that she was sitting in that was filled full of soap. Right. And so you gave her the nickname? Yes. <clears throat> Suds? Yes. It started out as Soapy Suds, but it ended up just going to Suds. Right. Did you ever discuss Sophie with Jake? while you were driving around in the r &L truck or anywhere else uh, after he had killed Hannah? Hundreds of times. During those conversations, did you know that he had killed Hannah? No. What was his demeanor when you brought up Suggs? Depends on what I was going on, but usually it turned into a fight and an argument. About what? Anytime I would say that Sophie made a face like Hannah or looked like Hannah or was acting like Hannah, he would throw a fit. You loved your son quite obviously, right? Yes. Did you love Suds? Yes. Did you kill these people for her? No. Would you ever do that? No. Would you kill anybody for your son? No. Let's talk about Tabby, your ex-wife, for a moment. How do you feel now about Tabby raising Bonnie? As long as she straightened her life up, I have no problem with it. When you guys were young and dating, living over on the Flying W or up the hill, what type of things would you like to do together? Me and Tabby? Yes. We go fishing, hunting, four-wheeling. Was there a particular spot or tree that you guys like to hang out at? When we were younger or back yeah. together as When you adults? were young? Not really. After we were adults and back together, yes. What was that? Um, I had a big hollowed-out beech nut that we used to go sit and deer hunt at. And where was that? On my grandmother's farm. Once you got your driver's license and, and turned 16, what type of activities did you like to do? I'd go hang out with my friends, drink, party, chase girls around, hunt and fish. Right. Did you ever go to any events or particular places? Almost all the county fairs in southern Ohio and all the fall festivals. Right. Would you go by yourself or would you go with somebody? Depending on who was available to go with me at the time. 
Would you go by yourself? Yes, if nobody else was available, I went by myself a couple of times. And why was that? If nobody else was available. I know, but why would you go to these? Go I just enjoyed them. Do you remember the type of truck you had at that time? When I was 16? Yeah. It was a 95 Dodge Diesel. All right. And did you get a truck after that? Many of them. Okay. Did you ever have a Duramax? Yes. Explain that. It was a 2007. All right. Did you have one after that? Uh, Duramax? Or, no, that's the only Duramax I've ever owned. Would you put a lot of miles on your trucks, whatever truck you have? Yes. Explain that. I probably put 40, 50,000 miles on a Duramax the first year I owned it. <coughs> Talk about your dad for just a moment again. Um, after the murders, did you notice any change in his behavior? Uh, he started drinking a lot more than he usually did, which he drank a lot anyways, but he just drank more than he did. Now, you touched on yesterday, I believe, I asked you about your weight, right? Yes. Um, what's the heaviest you think you've been? 316, 320 maybe. And how would you weigh yourself if you're that big? Usually, yeah. whenever I was at one of the co-ops or something, I'd step on their feed scale. And did you do anything to try to lose weight? I uh, took diet pills multiple times. And where did you get those diet pills? One place in, well, two different ones in Kentucky and one in Huntington. All right, explain how that works. It's just a doctor's office and they weigh you and give you a prescription of diet pills and tell you how to take them and then you come back every two months and they see if you've lost weight or not. All right, did they work for you? They do work and then they quit working and then you got to get them out of your system and start again and by the time you get them out of your system you're getting your weight back. So it's like a money gimmick. I think you testified yesterday that you considered Hannah like a, a little sister, is that right? Yes. Uh, what type of things would you, the two of you talk about? Everything from hunting and fishing and four-wheeling to county fairs to fall festivals. Uh, any issues that she had that she was going through or anything I was going through. Did you confide in her as well? Yes. What would you confide in her? issues about my weight and stuff when I couldn't lose weight and uh, if I was having a bad week with Jake or my mother or if I had any issues with Tabby or... Under any circumstances, would you kill Han? No. Would you assist somebody else in killing Han? No. Now, after these murders took place, did you change your phone number? At what point? Well, at any point. Uh, we, before I moved, right before I moved to Alaska, I got another phone, but I had two of them because I was waiting on the service to run out of the first one. And did you change your phone numbers more than once after? After Alaska? Yeah. Yes. And why did you do that? Um, our attorney, Clark, advised to do it. When you were up in Alaska with Vine and your family, did you ever offer to fly Tabby up to see you? Many a times. Explain that. I offered to uh, pay for her plane ticket, her, any expenses that she had, uh, so she could come see Vine and she never would come. Did you, once you got to know Beth, after your brother married her, did you think Beth was like Tabby in some ways? As the way she acted or well, her life yeah, the way she some acted. things she did yes and it was more in lines of everything that she said it happened to her and the it, it damages a person okay explain what you mean by that um, I just see it as when a girl is sexually molested as a young age it, it messes with them right. and did that cause you concerns as far as your son is concerned yes what were those concerns? I just didn't want to take a chance of anything happening to him. As comparison with, like, my ex-wife, her and her sisters think that it's normal, it happens to every child, that they'll just get over it if it happens to them, which isn't right. And had you read any books about this um, as you were raising Vine? On? 
on the on, on childhood development or what you what happens to kids when they're young or anything like that. No. That's just what you believe. Yes. All right. Mainly from me growing up around Tabby. Did you ever have an issue with your mother trying to access your phone? Um, her not really, I'm not going to say accessing it, but constantly looking over my shoulder trying to get the password to it. Explain what that, explain what you mean. I changed my password like daily because she would try and figure out what my password was. How do you know that? She was always looking over my shoulder when I put my password in. Was that before the murders? Far back as I've had an iPhone. Now, when you lived over on Peterson Road, did you ever uh, did you ever make money other than driving trucks? Uh, multiple different ways. Did you ever like, cut up trucks? Yes. Explain that. Um, my uh, grandfather, my mom's father, would have people come by that would have a diesel Dodge truck or a diesel Chevy or whatever kind of truck, really. But it, uh, they would owe on the truck, and they would want out from under it. So I'd give them 500 to to $1,000, and they'd give me the truck and give me a week to chop it up and sell it. And then they'd report it stolen and turn it in on the insurance company. And so explain how that works as far as chopping up and selling. You just take it apart piece by piece and then you sell the part, different parts to different people. And you did that when you lived on Peterson? Yes. Do you know approximately how many trucks? I believe five. Right. Do you remember the colors of any? Uh, one burgundy, two white, a uh, black one and a green one. And where did you keep those on the Peterson property when you were going through them? When I would first bring them home, yeah. they would go up on the hill, and then when I'd start taking them apart, I'd put them on the back concrete slab of the old barn. Okay, now when you say up on the hill, where do you mean? Um, up by the hog pens. Up by the hog pens. Yes. Let me show you a photo so you can get a better understanding. You know where the new barn is, right? Yes. Was it near the new barn? between the new barn and the hog pens. And why did you put it up there? There's kind of like a dip in the ground there. And you can't see it from the road unless you're coming back from, if you were to go down Peterson past the farm and turn around, you could see it coming back, but you couldn't see it from, if you were just at the house looking up. All right, now Peterson Road, that comes off 32, am I right? Yes. Is that a dead end road or is it through? It's dead end. All right, so if you, continue past your house on Peterson towards the dead end part. Describe what's down the um, road there. There's only four other houses down through there. All right. Do you know how far it goes about? Maybe a mile, mile and a quarter. Right, I want to show you exhibit here from the state. Probably remember this testimony, but XX1. Uh, when you were in Montana, you remember that, correct? Yes. And you remember, do you know whether the state took a computer or not from? I the believe vehicle? they took my brothers. Right. Uh, XX1 is an item which is labeled BC item 62, HP NV laptop. Do you know if that's, your, if that's your brother's computer or whose computer that is? I don't remember it being HP. I remember my brother's being an Apple, but okay. I could be wrong on that. All right. Did your mother have a computer or other item that she would use? She had uh, iPads. Is that what she liked to use? Yes. And what did your brother like to use? Uh, iPhone, Apple, anything Apple. All right. What about this HP? Do you remember this computer? I don't remember an HP. When you were on Facebook, how would you access Facebook? My phone. Your phone? Yes. Did you use the computer? Um, I had an Acer just to check deer cameras with. What do you mean check deer cameras? You take your SD card out of your trail camera and put it in the 
chip reader, stick it in, and view your pictures. All right. And, and just explain briefly what a trail camera is. It's just a camera you strap to a tree. What's it's got the an, purpose of that? It's got an infrared beam when a deer walks across it, it snaps a picture of it. And why would you do that? To see what size deer I had on the property for the year. Did you often use a computer? Only to check the trail cam photos. All right. And if you used Facebook, how did you access it? My phone. Now, you heard some testimony earlier about uh, it's being called custody documents. Yes. That was One was signed by you. Yes. One was signed by your brother, I believe. I think so, yes. And that would have been in April before the murder sometime before. I don't know the exact date. All right. What were the circumstances? Tell us what you know about that document you signed. I uh, came home one day and I was going to my room, change clothes, and go back out the door. And my mom said that she was filling one out for my brother and asked if I wanted one that was more legit than the handwritten one I had. And I told her if she wanted it, she had like 10 minutes to get it and I had to go. And I signed my name and walked out. Okay. So break that down a little bit. All right. Do you remember when that was? Sometime early 2016. All right. And the document that you signed, had it been completed? Was it blank? What did you know about it? It was just like a printed out form. Did you read it? No. I just signed my name to it. And what did you do after you signed your name? I walked out the front door and left again. And you said something about a handwritten document? Yes. Explain what you mean. When Tabby and I first got married, we had one written up when we found out we were going to have Vine, and if anything ever happened to the two of us, that my mom would end up with Vine. All right. And then after we got divorced, we had another one, well, I had one, that if anything happened to me, then my mom got Vine. All right. And what was your understanding of this document she wanted to, you to sign as you were coming in and out and changing your clothes? I just assumed she was making another one that was more legitimate looking than my handwritten one. Whether it matters or not, it's not the only ones I've ever had done. Explain what you mean. I uh, had another one done when I was in Alaska, and I had another one done when I came back from Alaska. Right. Now, I want to ask you some questions about those recordings we listened to. Okay. Um, when you were in the truck, as you now know, BCI placed listening devices in the truck, right? Yes. Right. Did you know that at the time you were driving the truck? 100% positive, no, but I assume there was very, every likelihood of it. Right. That was after they had interrogated you in Montana, right? Yes. Right. Did you know that your telephone was, all your telephone calls were being recorded? I assumed they were. Right. So let me ask you a few questions. During that time frame when you're working for r &L, what was your mindset, so to speak, about the investigation and uh, whether your family was guilty or not guilty. What was your mindset at that point? I believe that they were just trying to frame my mom and my brother and my family for the fact that they didn't have anybody else to look at. Why did you think that? Because I was raised to believe that all law enforcement was crooked and I thought they just wanted to close the case and didn't care about it being right or wrong. Now, yesterday, I think you talked for a minute, testified for a moment, about your caffeine consumption. Yes. When you're in that truck, were you following that habit or routine of yours as far as consuming caffeine? Yes, it's been an everyday thing of mine since I was like 16. Now, one of the conversations, if you remember, concerned, it was between you and your mother, concerned something about a bug detector. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. Can you explain? My father bought a bug detector and um, two GPS trackers in early 2015. And what's a GPS tracker? Uh, it magnetics itself to a frame and then you retrieve it at a later date. You can see everywhere that tracker has gone or stopped at. So are you telling us that that conversation was in reference to that? Yes. Do you remember a conversation, maybe more than one, between you and Jake while you're in the truck, between you and Jake about Beth being a spy. Yes. Explain that. Our attorney Clark had said that. You have an objection to anything his attorney said? It's 
not for the truth of the matter. It's just to explain his mindset. Your Honor, that's hearsay. It's not being offered for the truth. Well, I'm not sure where we're going with this. Uh, counsel wish to approach you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the jury, the uh, question I think will elicit some response or uh, may elicit some response from the witness concerning something he was told. Now, what he is told is, is uh, could be hearsay, and if it were being, it being admitted <coughs> for the truth of the matter asserted, you are not to uh, receive it for the truth of the matter asserted, but simply to explain the defendant's uh, act, actions after receiving this information. Is that clear? It's, it's uh, be, not being admitted what he was told. It's not being admitted for the truth of the matter asserted, but only to explain the defendant's actions. So you may ask the question. Thank you, Judge. What, what did your attorney tell you? From the way I understood it was that BCI would stoop to any level to get information about my family and that they would try and send a woman in there to get close to me or my brother and get information. All right. Does that explain some of the conversations we heard on the recordings between you and your brother about that? Yes, because she didn't know my brother at all and married him within like three months and I just didn't trust that. Not with everything that our family was being accused of. Did you and your brother have the same ideas on how to re how to raise your respective children? No, Can you not explain? by a long shot. Can you explain? <clears throat> My brother wanted to 
basically keep Sophie chained up in the house for her entire life until she graduated ch or college. What do you mean by that? His remark was always that when she started Can I school. Objection to anything that his brother said. Hearsay. What, what was your understanding of what he was saying? brother's idea of raising Sophie. My same objection. If uh, I'm if, that question are you asking him what his brother told him? Is that what you're I'm asking? I'm asking what his understanding was. Well, to the extent that it, it, if it's being offered to establish the truth of something his brother told him, then it's inadmissible hearsay, and I'll sustain the objection. All right, I'll rephrase, Judge. Uh, what was your uh, idea of how to raise mine? My idea of it was, I guess you could say I spoiled him. In what way? I didn't ever tell him that whatever he wanted, I got it for him, and I got a lot of hell over that. And my my main plan was that eventually when he was older, all kids are gonna be kids. Regardless of what you say or do, they're gonna make their own mistakes. I've made mine, everybody I know's made theirs. And they're gonna do it anyway, whether you tell them not to or whether you tell them to do it, they're gonna do it. So my way of fixing that was I was just gonna end up building like a great big lake one day on whatever piece of property I bought and have it own cabin on it from the time he turned as a teenager. So when he was out drinking and partying, which he's gonna do, all kids do it, that he would be there and I wouldn't worry about him running up and down the roads instead of him being running everywhere like I did. Did you discuss this with your brother? Yes. Did he agree with Objection. your way or not? <coughs> basis of your objection is? It calls for hearsay. Your argument would be that it's not? It's a yes or no question, Judge. Well, I'm going to sustain the objection. Did you discuss Jake's philosophy on raising Sophie? Yes or no? Yes. Was that a source of disagreement between you and him? I'm objection to leading. Well, I'll overrule the objection by the answer. Yes, it was a massive disagreement. Was, did you discuss with Jake the reasons for, and this is a yes or no question, did you discuss with Jake the reasons he was marrying Beth? Yes. Do you believe he was truthful with you? No, not at this point. And why do you I'd, say I'd, that? I'd object and move to strike on that, actually. I'm sorry? I'd object and move to strike. He's asking us to determine the mindset of somebody else. Right. I'll over the objection. Let that answer stand. Now, on these recordings that we heard over the last few days, you are heard talking about lawyers, your family either hired or consulted. Do you remember those? Yes. All right. Explain your understanding of that. Of which ones? Well, any of them, all of them. Wow. Take them one at a time. With Clark, my understanding was he was just in, like, reserve in case we ever got arrested. All right. I didn't know at the time that he couldn't do a case of this magnitude. All right, go on. And uh, basically my understanding of it was that he only thought that if anybody got arrested, it would be my mom and Your brother. Honor, objection to what his attorney thought. Well, yes, I will sustain the objection as to what someone else was thinking. Did you uh, look, remember, or thinking back on these recordings that we listened to, uh, do you remember saying on the recordings anything about your mother and whether she should get an attorney or not? Do you remember any of that? Yes. What do you remember? Um, the conversation that I believe you're talking about is that if all of us were arrested, that my mother should get the best one. And did you say that? Yes. Why did you say that? because my mom's the one that watched the kids five days a week while we were gone anyway. They were used to being with her for five days a week, and I figured it would be easier on the children. And were you thinking that, oh, my God, I'm going to... What were you thinking when you said that? I was just going under what... what basically I understood from the attorneys that if we got arrested, that it could take six months, it could take two years to get to a trial and be able to 
work things out. Do you remember on some of the recordings we listened to, your mother saying that uh, something about being framed? Yes. What do you recall? My mom and brother has said that since the beginning. That's why I believe that we were being framed because they said that they were twisting everything that my mom and brother had on their phones and laptops and they were trying to frame us. And was that your mindset during these conversations? Yes. After listening to these recordings that we heard in court, how do you feel about what Jake was saying and what you now know he did? I now know that he was just lying through his teeth to me. What about your mother? The same thing. She was lying to me from the beginning. Did you ever tell your mother, referencing these recordings, did you ever tell your mother you would take the blame for these murders? No, I did not. While we were listening to these recordings, there was actually a text message uh, that was shown to the jury between you and Josie. Do you remember that? Yes. All right. Something about how really close your family is? Yes. Can you explain that, um, that just, text message? We've just been in close proximity our whole life, and she was talking about moving down here at that time frame, and I just wanted her to understand that me and my family are fairly close with each other, and she said that was fine, and her family's the same way. Did that text have anything to do with these murders? No. Referencing back to these recordings again that we listened to, I remember hearing yourself say something along the lines of, and this is a conversation between you and Jake, every time I do something, you rat me out. Yes. Can you explain that? It reverts to our childhood. What do you mean? It didn't matter what I did as a kid, my brother ran to tell my mother. There was another recording we listened to in the last few days where you said something about everybody's out to get us. Yes. What do you mean by that? Uh, everything that was being said on topics and Facebook, it, like everybody was against my family. One of the conversations we listed, listened to involved your brother and your mother, and you were kind of in the background. Your mother said something about their framing us. Do you remember that? Yes. And that she would take the death penalty. Yes. you remember that? Yes. At that time, did you know your mom and brother were involved in these murders or committed the murders? No. I think it was in that same conversation where <coughs> Jake says he will get out one way or another. You remember that? Yes. At that time, did you know he had killed these people? No. I was under the assumption that he was referring to if he got framed and was wrongfully convicted. And then your voice is in the background, and, and you say, ain't going to have the electric chair or words to that effect. Yes. You remember that? Yes. What did you mean by that? I uh, just get irritated when people are messing with my family and stuff. Especially when I've been up for five days with no sleep and on massive amounts of caffeine and it makes you irritable. Did you know at that point that your mom and brother were actually guilty of anything? No. Are you guilty of any of these events? No. On that same recording or conversation, I remember hearing your voice say, I want to kill Ryan. Yes, I said that. What did, what did you mean by that? Explain the context. Of that. It was more of a line like when you're angry or somebody, you say stupid stuff like that. Don't mean that you mean it. I think everybody said that about somebody at one point or another. On a different recording uh, that they played for the jury, the state played for the jury, do you remember hearing that Jake had called, you're in the Arnell truck, Jake had called the boss or the headquarters or something about a family emergency? Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. What does that mean to you, or can you explain it? It, uh, he wanted to get back in time to talk to Clark before he left the office. All right. So the phrase family emergency, does that have any significance with respect to your employment? As far as getting home, it does, because if you want a direct route or you want to get home faster, 
then you have no other choice but to say that, or they won't give you a direct route or bring you home faster. And it really, we were at the end of our week anyways and on our way back, so instead of dropping off, we, you run the same road back regardless, but instead of stopping at five different terminals, you just get a straight load from one terminal to another one, back to Wilmington, instead of stopping at five different ones in between. It saves you roughly 10 hours. One of the conversations that was played, your mother's telling you, at least one of them, your mother's telling you, don't talk on the phone. Yes. Can you explain that? Yeah, I'm sure there's probably hundreds of them saying that. What's your, is that unusual for your mom to say something like that? Not really, I mean, it was the advice of the attorney. In one of the conversations, there's something about Beth trying to poison one of the family. Yes. Do you know anything about that, or can you explain that? I know the incident that's referring to. Explain. My uh, mother tried saying she poisoned the ice cubes. Who poisoned the ice cubes? Yes. Okay. What do you know about that? Uh, I know that when I got home and done my little experiment, it ended up that she just didn't wash the Dawn dishwashing liquid out of it. There was a conversation, I believe, between you and your brother about Beth again. And you say something about moving her into a low-income apartment. I just wanted my brother to get her out of the house. Why? Because I didn't trust her. Did you want her dead? No. There was another comment you made to your brother during one of these phone calls about you telling people the truth is the reason we're in this mess. You remember that? Yes. Can you explain? It falls back to... In the beginning, I believe that the finger was pointed at my family because my brother pissed off the Manleys. Which he does to almost everybody he's around. Do you remember, uh, I believe, a conversation, I believe it was with you and your mother, but you were involved, where you said something about wanting to own your own little farm out west? Yes. Can you explain that? I was going to eventually, at that point in time, I was going to transfer to Missouri's terminal after a year and buy me a farm out there. Are you familiar with the phrase Winter Olympics or Olympics? Yes. What does that mean? That's what I made. Okay, explain. It's my own wording for it. But what is that? Me and the there's really only three of us, but I'm the, I guess you'd call the founding father of it. What is it? Um, me, Chris, and Randa started our own, like, deer hunting re regime. Okay, explain. Um, when I had Vine and got married to Tabby and moved to Peterson and started hauling cattle, I didn't have a whole lot of time to deer hunt anymore. So instead of living without my freezer filled full of deer and not being able to have deer to eat every day, me and Chris and Randall would go out every night when I come in on the weekends and stuff and fill the freezer up. And what time of year would you do this? Between the end of September and Christmas. I usually cut off at Christmas. Is that deer season? Yes. And so what would you do with the deer that you killed? I would usually skin every one of them, process them, put them in the freezer. The ones that went past the tag limits would i do myself. Ones that were legally tagged, I would take to the processor. And did you eat deer meat off? Daily. Every day? Every day. More than once or just one meal? Two, three times a day. Did you process and use for food all the deer that you killed? Every one I've ever shot but one. And why? What, what was up with that one? Chris and I shot one that was still full of gangrene. After you returned from Alaska back to Ohio, you lived on South Webster for a while? Yes. And that was the house where your mother grew up in? Yes. Did you ever have a conversation with her about that house? Yes. What was your understanding? Your Honor, objection again. Anything calling for the Well, it sounds like it may be intersecting. I'll rephrase it. All right. Thank you. Without telling us what, did 
did your mother ask you to do something to that house? Yes. What was your response? I told her no. Was it similar to what happened to the houses on Bethel Hill? Yes. I could have just a moment. Did you know your family was going to kill these people? No. Before it happened, did you know? No. After it happened, did you know? No. Did you ever have any conversations with your brother about it? No. Did you ever talk to your mom about it? No. Your dad? No. If you had known this was going to happen, what would you have done? I don't know exactly how, but I would have stopped it one way or another. Did you love him? Yes. Did you consider Frankie a good friend? I considered him my best friend. Looking at Wagner Exhibit 53-1, this is your wedding photo, right? Yes. You have one arm around who? Tabby. You have another arm around who else? Frankie. Do you have Jack? The uh, state may cross-examine. Let's go ahead and start with Frankie. You consider him your best friend? Yes. Better than Chris Newcomb? Chris Newcomb's not my friend. Chris Newcomb's my brother. Thought you considered him more than just a brother, even. Chris Newcomb is, she should have been my brother. Okay. So in 2012, you have your arm around Frankie. He's standing next to you at your wedding. Yes. And Prior to the homicides, when had you ever talked to Frankie? The last time beforehand? Yes. Probably late December. Late December of 2015? Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that you told us that you didn't even know Hannah Hazel? I have met her one time in my life. But at the border, when you were interviewed in 2017, you said you had never met her, that the last person you knew Frankie to be seeing was some girl named Angel, and that was before you got married in 2012. Angel was before Chelsea. You indicated at the border that the last person you knew Frankie to be seen was some girl named Angel, and that was when you still had your polling truck, which was before you got married. Not that I remember. I could be wrong on that, but not that I remember. Okay. You didn't even know Ruger's name, correct? I didn't know Ruger's name at the time. In 2017, when you were talked to, you yes, did not know Ruger's I hadn't Ruger's met him name. yet. Say it again? I had never met Ruger. Okay. So you'd never met Hannah Hazel, usually a woman's pregnant for nine months, and Ruger was six months at the time of birth. That's at least 15 months where you didn't know Hannah Hazel. Never met her. Never met her. But Frankie was your best friend. Yes, who I consider my best friend. Okay. Who you blocked on Facebook? Who I did not block on Facebook. Well, he was blocked on your Facebook. It might be, but it didn't happen for me. Okay. And you did not have any Facebook conversations with Frankie either, did you? Not very many that I remember. As in zero? Not that I remember. Okay. And... You indicated, well, would just say, um, what is the age difference between you and Frankie? Between me and Frankie? Yeah. I'm going to say about three and a half years. Or maybe four? Could be close to four, three and a half, four. Okay. So your best friend is four years younger than you? Roughly. And this is the person that you said that you hung out with at Big Bear Lake? Yes. And you would drink with? Yes. When you were 18? When I was 18, 19. 
so he was 14 and 15. Yes. And you're the only one of his friends that says he drinks. If his other friends are saying he doesn't, they're lying. Well, they came in because here. Because Brett we Hatfield sat right there with me, okay. and Frankie. So did Chelsea. We all did. Okay. You've seen the crime scene photos. Yes. Okay. Any alcohol there at Frankie's? I didn't pay attention to him for that. Yeah. Lots of pop cans in the crib and lots of pop on the kitchen table, but no alcohol. Yeah. I didn't pay attention if there was any alcohol cans or not. Okay. So would you buy the alcohol for Frankie? No, I did not. Who did? The last time. Would well, the last time we hung out, or the majority of them, would be Tony's son, is who went to the Briar Patch and brought it. Okay. So this was before you were married to Tabby, right? Before we got married, yes, when we were okay. down so there. So again, we're talking before 2012. Yes. And you indicated that that was, at the border, you indicated that the time that you would be down at Big Bear Lake was while you were attending the diesel mechanic school, correct? Correct. And you attended for a year? Yes. Okay. And was this a year-round thing at, at Big Bear Lake? It was all summer. All summer. So a summer you spent down there at Big Bear Lake? Two. Roughly two. One and a half, two. Okay. So one and a half yes. to two summers you spent yes. down there. And I say one and a half because my brother got us kicked out. Okay. And you remember Chelsea testifying? Yes. Okay. Is it true that you reached out to her at some point? At uh, one point in time, I, me and Chelsea started talking, yes. Okay. And Frankie found out about that? Yes. And he was upset. In the beginning, yes, until I explained that we were nothing more than friends. Okay. So then Chelsea's lying when she said that that put a, uh, you guys held a grudge against each other after that? And no. your friendship We did dissipated. not hold a grudge against each other after that. Okay. So she's lying. I'm not saying she's lying. I'm saying she's mistaken. Okay. But you never met Hannah Hazel and didn't know Ruger's name. No. Okay. You also indicated that Frankie was a fighter. Yes. That you've seen videos of him fighting. Yes. And that you would have to go through Frankie to get to anyone in the family. More than likely, yes. I mean, that's what you said. Yes. I don't see Frankie letting anybody mess with his family. Yeah. Or Kenneth, right? I don't see anybody in their family letting anybody mess with their family. Okay. And you knew Kenneth to be a pretty strong person, correct? Yes. Okay. And by comparison, you were indicating that you lift a, an engine block out of a vehicle by yourself. I have not out of a vehicle, but loaded onto a trailer at one point. Okay. And, but you thought that Kenneth was even stronger than you? Probably by twice. Okay. You described him as strong as a bull ox, right? If not more than that. Okay. Kind of how Jake described you, correct? Kind of. Okay. I guess we'll start with your upbringing where you committed an unlimited number of offenses with your family, correct? Theft more, offenses. More than I can count on the thefts. Okay. And you guys each had your own roles uh, when you would commit those thefts, is that correct? Not really. Okay. It was more of like everybody did it. Everybody did it? Everybody done the same thing. Okay. So you're opening up a truck, you're looking to see if there's anything in there that you guys want, right. you're making the decision. Kind of as Whether it's worth taking or not. Okay. And sometimes somebody wants diapers and the other person wants rocky boots and you guys talk about it. And, and there was not really me talking about that one. Okay. That was between my dad, my mom, and my dad's friends. Okay. But if you look at something, you discuss whether or not it's worth taking. While we're in the middle of it, yes. Okay. All right. And you indicated you had this um, game, I guess, of finding the trail cams. Right? 
when you're driving down the road, you ha if you could spot trail cams, you got a dollar for every trail cam you found? or Not whatever. trail cams, oh. video cameras. Surveillance? Yes. Okay. And the surveillance cameras wasn't for the dollar, that was spotting cops. Okay, so you tell me, what were the gains attached to finding the surveillance the cameras? The surveillance cameras was if, when we got older, if my brother and I didn't see one that my dad had seen, and when he pointed out where well, you missed this one, then we'd get our four wheeler, take him for a weekend or a week or. Okay. And when you say old or how old were you then? This would have been 04 or no. <coughs> oh four, oh five. Okay. So how would, old would you have been? I would have been 13, 14. And you're aware, well, so you would, you would be taught to look for surveillance systems. Yes. How did you go about that? What made you good at that? You would just constantly go up and down the streets, or if we walk through Walmart or drive down the road, my dad would constantly beat it in your head, and if we missed one, he would take us back and keep looping the block or the parking lot until we found where it was at. Did you ever do the same thing for trail cams? No. Okay. But you also were always looking for police officers. Yes. And that's where the dollar came, comes yes. in. Yes. That started when I was a young kid and we were still running back and forth to Pennsylvania. Okay. So if you could spot a police officer before your dad did. Yes. We right? got a dollar. And you were aware that at some point um, BCI thought that you used that night scope that you had bought yes. to spot trail cams. Yes. Okay, because it can detect that infrared, correct? I'm not aware of it, it can. Okay. You did not use that for that purpose, no. is that correct? No, it was used for the Winter Olympics. Okay, and the Winter Olympics again is? Me and my Uncle Chris Miranda shooting deer. At night? Yes. Poaching? Yes. I mean, that's against the yes. hundred of rules and regulations. Yeah. Okay. And you bought that night scope yourself, right? Technically, it was a gift from my father. Okay. So, tell me about that. My father paid for it for a gift for me. Okay. Were you with him at the time? When we got it, yes. Okay. And where did you get it? Bass Pro Shop. Okay. And do you remember when you got it? Not technically, no. Okay. Does fall of 15 sound correct? Could be. Okay. But you described that scope specifically, right? Yes. What kind of scope was it? It's an ATN night, or ATNX site. Okay. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as triple C2. If you could look at that and tell me if you recognize any purchase on that. Mm. Yeah. And what do you recognize? The ATNX site's on it. Okay. How much was that? Huh? How much was that? Um. $641. Okay. Paid with cash. Give me a second here. Yes. And with Jake's rewards card, correct?
I'm trying to see it on here. Hang on. I don't see his re rewards cards number on here. I just see his name. Okay. Is it true that you would use Jake's rewards card whenever you shopped at Bass Pro? Occasionally, not all the time. Um, yeah, he's listed as the purchaser because his rewards card was used. He did not purchase that, correct? Jake did not purchase that scope. I withdraw my answer. No, my father paid for it. Okay. And you were present? I was there that day, yes. Okay. Was your brother present that day? don't remember on that. Okay. Did you guys like to shop at Bass Pro? It's about the only store that I actually shop at. Okay. I shop at other, other ones occasionally, but the majority is Bass Pro. Okay. You were just talking about chopping up vehicles and explain that to me. Would you like explain with it? Yeah, so you said people would give you their vehicles, you would chop them up and sell them, and then they would report them stolen. So tell me. Technically not give, I paid for them. And okay. then they would report them later. Okay, so you would pay? Anywhere from 500 to $1,000, depending on what the truck was. Okay. If it was a gas engine truck, it was on the $500 line. If it was a diesel, it was 1000 Okay. And then those individuals would report it stolen and then yes. get money they get out insurance. from under get out from under the loan. Okay. And the so insurance company would pay their loan off. And who were these people? Just different people in Southwestern Ohio. Well, you obviously knew them. No. I just would stop and pick up, hand them some money, and I would take the truck out. My grandfather knew them. Okay. So how would you know that they would then report it stolen and that that was their plan? That's what my grandfather would relay to me. Okay. And which grandfather said? Carter. And when did those sorts of things happen? I started doing that when I moved to Peterson. Okay. And how long did that go on? The last one I did was I believe early 2016. Okay. Your um, insurance, your the truck that you guys had bought off of Bernie Brown, also um, was the victim of an arson, correct? To my understanding, it was accidental. So you did not know that that was purposely set on fire? I don't believe it was set on fire on purpose, no. Okay. Well, you Would you like detail into that? Sure. My father has his own method of burning a vehicle. That truck was still left standing. So if your father had burned it intentionally, it would have been? It would have been nothing but a hawk of a frame sitting there and no body left on it. But it was inoperable after that. It caught fire on the inside and it smothered itself out, yes. Okay. And you guys collected on insurance for that? My father did, yes. Okay. Well, the Wagner Trucking Company did, right? Which is my father's company. Okay. His DOT number. Yeah, his you truck. got paid through the Wagner Trucking Company. I worked for it, yes. Yeah. Um, and then in October of 2016, your truck was intentionally wrecked by Jake and Chris. Yes. Okay. And then that's because it needed fixed? No. Okay. So Jake was telling the truth about intentionally wrecking it, but he was lying about you needing Correct. a large amount of repair. Correct. Okay. But you agree that it was intentionally wrecked? I agree it was intentionally wrecked okay. between me and Chris. You said between you and Chris? Yes. 
And what do you mean by that? We had an agreement that we would split what he got out of it. And that was to help him out because he needed money? To help me and him both, yes. And you know that's a crime? Yes. Okay. And the reason I'm asking, of course, is because yesterday you told us you gave up your life of crime in 2014 or 2015. Not what I said. What did you say? I said I gave up busting in the trailers and stealing fuel. And stealing what? Fuel. Okay. Because you didn't want to look over your shoulder, I think. Correct. Okay. But, but these crimes you weren't worried about? That was the, to my knowledge, that truck was the last one I tried. The first thing I've ever tried on my own without my family's involvement. Okay. And well, it failed rapidly. The truck that you wrecked? That my brother and Chris wrecked. Yeah, uh, so you said without your family's help, well, obviously you had your family's help because Jake. When I say my family's help, I mean my father and my mother's ideals of doing it. Okay, all right. I'm unclear when you said that your parents or your, I think your father bought Jake the truck of his dreams before he was even able to drive and yet Correct. you got stuck with a $2,500 Correct. truck. Of course, obviously he buys you scopes and gives you motorcycles and stuff. So, Correct. I mean, but are you trying to say that, that Jake was the favorite or, or? I'm trying to say that I don't hold the truck against my father. I hold that against my mother. Okay. Even though your dad's the one that bought it. It was my dad's money that paid for it. My mother made him pay for it. Okay. So you would not say that Jake was the favorite child? Of my mother's, yes. Of your mother's? Yes. Okay. So you recall that that's not what you said at the border, right? I don't remember much of what I've said at the border. Okay. I remember some of it, but not all of it. Okay. Well, you were asked, it was stated to you, your mom and Jake are tight. Do you think they're closer than you and your mom? And you said, no, my mom's never given me a reason to think that they were closer. Do you remember that? As far as like talking wise, <coughs> that would be true. But as far as favoritism, as my brother getting everything, it's not true. You didn't, certainly didn't explain that at the border. I wasn't asked that. Obviously, when you were growing up, you were the, the kind of rebel rouser, right? Pretty much. You, went, you were drinking at a young age? Yes. Jake wasn't? No, not to my knowledge. Okay. He was helping with the chores, you weren't? Yes. Okay. And... Would you agree with me that that's not an unusual request of a parent that you not do those things? For not letting a child go out and drink and party? At age 12 and 13, I think is when you said you I started? I think that's about normal for any parent not to want their kid to. Okay. In fact, you didn't, you didn't want your son to do half of the things you did growing up, correct? Do I want him to? No. Right. But is he going to? More than likely. Every child does except for one that I've seen that didn't. And I guess you tried, or at least you, it seemed yesterday that you were talking about Jake as if mm, you hardly even liked him. At which point in time? Any point in time. From early childhood, it wasn't that bad with him because we were just little kids. But the older we got, the worse he got. Okay. 
And at the last point, I might get 10 good days out of 100 with him, maybe. Okay. But you just saw that text message in 2018, right, to Josie? Yes. Where you're saying, um, I'm really close with my family. You're kind of warning her or making sure that she's okay with that because you were contemplating having her come live with you, right? Not at the house I was staying in, though. Say it again? Not at the house I was staying in, though. But you wanted her to come live with you. I wanted her to move down here eventually because that's what she was talking about, but I wasn't going to let her move in the house with my mother. Okay. You didn't want her in the house with your mother. Correct. So, in July of 2018, when you were talking to your mother on the phone, when you said that you wanted your own little farm somewhere out west, where I can still make a living, and where me and Jake can live peacefully with you and the kids and whoever else we decide to bring, so we can have a nice, peaceful life without all of that crap and the drama from everyone. Am I allowed to explain this? Did you say that? Yes, I said that. Okay. Am I allowed to go into detail with this? Sure. It doesn't mean live in the same house. It means buy a bigger farm and he has a house on one corner, she has a house on one corner, and I've got a house on a corner. Okay. Kind of like what you guys were considering doing when you moved to Missouri, right? Everybody had their own house on a different side of the piece of property. On the property, all together, but each have your own house. Yes, so we have our own place. And here, you wanted to go back out west in July of 18, right? Yes. After having wanted to come back to Ohio in 2017, right? Yes. Or earlier in 2018, actually. Yes. Right? So you'd actually just come back to Ohio in 2018. Yes. Okay. And there was talk of Josie, you know, understands what the children have been through, and um, she would be fine to live with you guys? Yes. Okay. I know you talked about your mother and you said, well, you describe her to me. She is. Thinks she's better than everybody. Thinks everything has to be done her way. I, w I would probably say that I could put selfish in that manipulative. Okay. And again, I mean, this is, this is new and different than what you told us at the border, right? That's not what you said about your mother at the border, right? I don't remember what I said at the border. Okay. Well, you were asked if your mom was controlling. I bet your mom is so controlling that she probably even organized the whole thing. And you said, my mom is not controlling. You were asked, your mom's not controlling? You said no, at all. Do you remember saying that? I don't remember saying that. Okay. Well, is that true? That she's not controlling? Correct. As a, before my 10th birthday, she wasn't so bad as I can remember, but she got worse as the years went by. Okay, so in 2017, when you were asked that question, and you said she's not controlling, she Was tried that true to be. or not? As far as actually controlling me, no, she didn't. Okay. But she tried to control me, if that answers your question. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what the truth is, um, considering you said one thing at the border and you said an entirely different thing yesterday and today. So, um, in fact, you were asked... about the dynamics in your house. Yes. In fact, asked who runs the house. Do you remember what your response was? It's technically my mother's house. Okay. Um, you actually answered between me and Jake. 
was your response to who runs the house. And you were asked over your parents. And you said, nope, the house is mine and Jake's, basically. Mom just stays there because she's got a lot of health issues and she babysits the kids. She does babysit the kids and have health issues, but the house technically belongs to her. The house is in me and my brother's name, and we pay the bills there, but it's still technically her house. Okay. So when you were asked who's the one that always gets their way, who's in charge, do you remember saying that kind of goes between me and my brother? don't remember putting my brother's name in it, but I always did what I wanted to. Okay. Well, in your responses, you said you and Jake run the house, and between you and your brother is who gets their way. I may have said that, but I just don't remember it. Okay. Well, was that true? With me and my brother getting our way? Yeah. When I wanted to do something, I did it. Anything my brother wanted to do, my mom agreed with. So... When you were asked who's in charge and you said that kind of goes between me and my brother over my parents, is that true? I'm not understanding what you mean by who's in charge. What's your response? It, it's your answer. So I'm asking you. I'm just not you, understanding what you mean by who's in charge here. Okay, well, that's what you were asked. But who's the one that always gets their way? Question mark. Who's in charge? Question mark. And your response is that kind of goes between me and my brother. So, so I can only assume on what I'm, you want me to explain what I mean by that? As like the in charge part or the get your way part? If you can answer yes or no first and then explain, is well, it true? Yes. Is that a true answer? I would say yes. Okay. I know at some point you talked about how your mother would get upset with you because you were out hunting 24-7. Hunting, fishing, for willing. Okay. And you'd be away working and then you'd come back and, and you'd hunt on the weekends. Yes. Okay. And she thought you should spend more time with your son at that time, correct? Yes. Okay. And then you said at some point she said something along the lines of, you can just go away and I'll, I'll take care of Bullvine full time. This was at South Webster, after I moved back from Alaska. Okay. You talked about these custody documents that you and your brother um, signed and your mother forged the signature for um, Hannah on, correct? All in the same magical day, correct? Yes. And you obviously heard the testimony that that happened at the kitchen table in, in your house. And it was in the kitchen. In the kitchen, okay. So you agree with that? I agree. I signed my name to mine in the kitchen and left. Okay. And you indicated you just signed that? Yes. So you trust your mother? I trust my mother 75, 80%. There's some parts of her I don't trust. Okay. But you signed this document saying if you were to be killed or something happened to you, she would get your child. Who else would I leave him to? I have no one else to leave him to. Yeah. But it was dated 2015, and that's not when you signed those documents. I didn't know right? what date was on it. I signed it early 16. You signed it in April. Sometime of 16. I don't know the exact date. Yeah. Well, obviously sometime after April 3rd of 2016, because that was when it was printed off the computer. Could be. I don't know the exact date. I You've just know it was 16. Documents. I didn't pay much attention to it. I was seeing it had my signature. Okay. Um...
by making Andrew what's been marked as CC295C. You could look at that and tell me what that is. It's the document that I signed. Okay. So that is your signature? Yes. There. Okay. And you see the date at the bottom there? Yes. Okay. And is that consistent with your experience as far as the computer spitting out the date something is printed off the computer? I couldn't tell you on that. I don't use computers that much. Okay. But this is dated March 11th of 2015. Yes. And it clearly was not signed in March 11th of 2015. No, I signed it the day it was printed off. Okay. And then these documents became an issue in the investigation, didn't they? Yes. Okay. And you knew that very much, yes. correct? Yes. And, in fact, you had a conversation with your grandmother where you tried to remind her that you guys had, uh, she had been there when Hannah just happened to stop by and wanted to have a typewritten dot version of some earlier document and they backdated it back to the day she originally signed it. I don't remember that conversation. Okay. Well, you do remember the conversation where your mother is talking to her mother, Rita, and reminding her of the conversation that you had with her where you told her that, correct? From the uh, 2017? I don't recall that one. Why? Okay. If you got a copy of it, I can read well, it. Well, we played it in the, we played it I here. I don't remember hearing it. If you got okay. a copy of it, I can maybe jog my memory with it. Okay. Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I can hand him the transcript. Yeah. You want to pull it up? Yeah, I don't know. Would seeing the document or the transcript of the recording help you? Yeah, just seeing is fine. Okay. I actually highlighted the one. Can you identify the date, please? It is WW16B. It is call 1658. <clears throat> Do you remember that? I remember it being played now, but I've never talked to my grandmother about this. Okay. So your mom's reminding her mother of this conversation, but you're saying that conversation never occurred. I'm saying I've never talked to my grandmother about a custody document. Not that I can ever remember. You certainly did talk about the custody documents, though, a lot, right? With my mother, yes. Yes. And lots of concern about people testifying to grand jury and handwriting exemplars, et cetera, correct? I guess you could call it that, yeah. Okay. Well, you were worried about it, right? Yes. Okay. Why were you worried about it? I worry about anything to do with law enforcement. My whole life I have. Okay. It's how I was raised. All right. So, I mean, you realize it's forgery to backdate a document, right? Uh, yes. Okay. And it's forgery to sign somebody else's name to a document? Yes, I can see that. Okay. I just don't see how me signing my name is forgery. You, 
Well, it was backdated. I didn't know that. The page was, from my understanding, blank from what I can remember when I signed my name. Okay. So you just signed your name to a completely blank document? To a custody document. She said, sign my name. I signed it and walked out. Okay. But you wanted to leave your child with your mother? If something was ever to happen to me, yes. I had a no few one else. Weeks later. There was no one else to leave it to him. Again, you had lots of conversations about concerns about the handwriting that was going to be taken. Because it's something to do with law enforcement. And I was raised that law enforcement's crooked and tries to twist everything. Well, you were raised to commit a lot of crimes. I was, not that it was right, but that's how I was raised. It took me a long time to realize that it was wrong. And that no matter and when, what my... when did you realize that? When I realized that my dad was wrong and it was actually hurting people. So that particular crime you realized was actually hurting people, right? The stealing of stuff out of trailers. Yes. But you didn't swear off a life of crime. Just that particular one you realized there actually were victims, the, right? Uh, with the stealing fuel and loads, I quit in late 14, I believe. Okay. The last thing I can remember doing aside from deer hunting that was be considered illegal was the Duramax being wrecked. Then after that, it was just deer hunting. Okay, so what about the loan fraud that you guys? To my knowledge, I don't think there was any. Okay, did you say that you were gonna be working for your grandmother and have her for provide documents saying that? Client W Farms? Yeah. I was gonna work part time for her, yes. Okay. But that's not what it said. It said you would be. I don't know exactly what it says. I didn't fill the paperwork out. You do recall coming back to Ohio and filling out a document that applying for a driver's license that was false, right? Uh, no, I don't recall that. Where did you live when you came back to Ohio in 2018? I uh, stayed in South Webster. At what house? Uh, my grandfather's. Which is what address? I can't remember the address now. It's Haven Lane. Haven Lane. So you did not live at Oak Hill, correct? No. I did use that address, though. Well, clearly you used that address, because that's what you used by your I'm going to hand you what's been marked as quadruple K. You could just tell me if you recognize that at all. something to do with my CDL. So it's an application for a driver's license, correct? Yes. Okay. And what address did you put down there? Oak Hill. Okay. And that is not where you were living? No. It's my grandmother's farm. If okay. I remember correctly, it has something to do with R&L. That's why I used that address. Well, you're providing false information to a state agency, correct? Yes. It also had something to do with the fact that you were trying to stay out of the awareness of Tabby's, right? No, it had nothing to do with that. Okay, but you were trying to keep her from knowing you were back in Ohio. No. So that whole June 7th date, the one year of abandonment? Didn't have me trying to keep her from knowing I was back. I just wasn't contacting her myself. Okay. So that your testimony is... My attorney's advice. Your attorney's advice was to use a fake address? No, it was his advice to not contact Abby. Okay. 
And also, you guys were preoccupied with, that was one of the reasons why you guys didn't want Beth Ann to get a job, right? Because that was in the area that Tabitha's family lived and you thought they might come across her and then know suddenly where you guys lived. I had no knowledge of Beth not getting a job. I thought she just didn't want one. Okay. But you did have concerns about Tabitha trying to make contact with you before the one year term was up and therefore you couldn't use this abandonment thing? No. So you were not trying to do abandonment? I was not trying to get Tabby not to contact me. I was not contacting her. There's a difference in that. Tell me about the abandonment. According to Clark, that if she went a year without talking to him, it was abandonment. Okay. And I didn't see it as, from my attorney's advice, he says with what the paperwork said, it's not my job to contact her. But if she doesn't contact me, that's on her part. So you were waiting and hoping for that one year to pass? I was waiting on the one year mark, so if she started trying to start her stuff, like she eventually filed, which I now know was under BCI's advice, that- By start her stuff, you mean seek to have contact with her son? No, I mean by trying to get her mother and her sisters to see him. Okay. She tried. So Go to Tabby. So you, she left on November 11th of 2014, right? Yes. That was the last day she was there. The uh, last day she lived at the house, yes. Okay. And you indicated yesterday that you had six weeks where you tried to patch things up, but then found out that she was still not being faithful to you. And so you went over there in the middle of the night and told her, forget about it. Uh, we were going to get divorced at that point, yes. Okay. In fact, you had already filed those paperwork. You had already filed the disillusion. Yes, we were starting over from ground zero. This is joint exhibit number one. Referring you to page four, at the very top. First of all, do you know what that document is? It's the dissolution agreement. Okay, and, and what date did you guys sign that? Uh, I really can't read this handwriting. Let me go to a different page. Well, that's the... I can't read that handwriting. 26th day of November, 2014. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. So, two weeks after she left you, you had a legal document already prepared for her and you to sign. It was agreed upon that me and her were gonna try and fix things and start from ground zero. And that if we fixed it before the hearing, then we were not gonna go through with it. Okay. And she just continued to mess around with her best friend's dad. So. Okay. And it was final January 26th of 2015. I think that's what the document said. Okay. So a little more than two months later. Something like that. It's finalized. Okay. And you know that in there it says reasonable visitation as agreed to by the parties, right? Yep that she ought to have supervised parenting time with the minor child as can be agreed upon by the par between the parties at reasonable times. Yes. And you're to cooperate with the parenting time schedule. Yes. And they agreed they will cooperate as to parenting time at the holidays. Yes. Okay. But you didn't do that, did you? I did do that. You did do that. So why is it in March, two months later, she's sending you certified mail saying that she wants to have regular visitation every Wednesday. 
Your Honor, am I allowed to go into detail with this? You have to answer the question. For the detail of it is, she canceled as many times to come visit as I did. The majority of her cancellations was because she wanted to bring her mother or her sisters with her. And, and we'll walk through that. Mom, you felt contributed to her abuse. Yes. Technically, her mother held her down. You weren't there. I had her mother tell me this out of her own mouth. And did you ever file charges against her? Against who? Her mother. No, I did not. I was under the influence that unless one of the girls said something, that nothing would be done. I would think someone confessing to you like that would be pretty powerful. Regardless, her sisters were victims, right? Yes. They didn't abuse anybody. Yes in or her, no? In their own words, no, they did not. Okay. So why is it you would not permit her sister, the aunt, one of the aunts of your son, to come visit at your house while you're there supervising? What could have possibly happened during that time? Because her sisters were doing the same thing that her mother and them did, marrying men 30, 40 years older than them, thinking that it's okay if a child gets molested. Okay, so you really have no clue whatsoever what her sisters think, correct? I know what they have all told me in my presence. For people that you don't want to be around at all, you sure have a lot of conversations with them about really intimate things. I spent a lot of time with them before my son was born, yes. Okay. So, again, what could have possibly happened with them being there with you supervising? I couldn't answer that one. I don't know what could or couldn't have happened. I just didn't want to take a well, chance. Well, would you let anything happen? I wouldn't have let them do anything to my son in my presence, no. Okay. But there's always a possibility that, you know, I might have to answer a phone call or something. I didn't want to take a chance. Okay. But sh the fact remains, Tabitha believed that this was a temporary situation, that once she got on her feet, got her own place, got, her, got a job, was able to provide for Bullvine, that this arrangement that she signed in January of 2015 would change, correct? Can I go into detail on this? It's a yes or no question. It's uh, yes. Okay. So, two months later, because she didn't, she didn't want Bullvine around her stepfather either, right? That's correct. That's the man who abused her, correct? That's correct. She didn't want him around him either. Yeah. So, but once she tar started trying to see him, you didn't allow it. I allowed Tabby to see him any time that she wanted to see him. Okay, now that's not true because you just got done saying you canceled just as much as she did. So you obviously canceled on her. I have canceled due to work and I've rescheduled and said come a day later or two days later. And then when I would call and say that we got to do it on this day, she would say that she had to go with her mom or her boyfriend and couldn't do it that day. Okay. You saw her messages to Hannah where she talks about very much missing her son and wanting to see him and you not letting her, correct? I don't doubt that Tabby would have liked to have seen by but I never kept her from it. She canceled the same as I have. Okay. Could counsel approach just a minute? Oh, yes. take a morning break now ladies and gentlemen uh, it's uh, about 5 to 11 so we'll be in a break until 10 after 11 uh, at that time assemble at the jury room to be brought up to the court by court personnel while, while you're on break do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else do not permit this case to be discussed with you or in your presence do not form or express an opinion concerning the case uh, do no research at all concerning the case as to the facts or as to the law from any source at all. Do not read, view, or listen to any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all and have no contact 
with any of the participants in the case, including parties, counsel, or witnesses. Does counsel for either side have anything you wish to place on the record before we recess for a morning recess? No, ma'am. Then we are in recess until 10 after 11. So let me show you this so and make sure I've got. So we've only got two ATFs. Yeah, yeah okay, you have to scare for a second. Oh, yeah. So we've got a no hard, hard copy of the world thing. Right. Murder with a nine cents with a skull whip. With a receipt. Yeah. Okay, so look at this. I feel like I have a hodgepodge. All right. Yeah, you've got two ATFs. Oh, okay. Don't worry. 44 cents. Yeah, the other one only has a couple. One of them for the one of them is for an AR-15. This list looks like a DD-15. Right? Yeah, it's not that It's on the last page, it lists the type of gun. It's a Diamondback VB 15, that's an AR 15.
Council for each side ready to have the jury go there? Yes, yes Your Honor. You may be seated. Council for the State of Ohio may resume cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. George, I'm going to hand you what's been marked as quadruple L1. If you could look at that, tell me if you recognize what that is. It is a, uh, I, think a, I think it's a, called a background check for a firearm. It's a what? I think it's a background check for a firearm. Okay, do you recognize anybody's signatures on there? Mine. Okay, and do you know um, what weapon you were purchasing? It's an AR-15. Okay, and when was that purchase made? <coughs> Eight, sixteen, or fifteen. Okay. 
And that would be the weapon that you bought the scope for, that your dad bought the scope for you yes. the, a month later, approximately, yes. correct? Okay. Can you with the Marcus quadruple L2? We go ahead and look at that. Another firearms receipt. Okay, and can you tell us the date on that? It is 3 17 16. Okay, and what weapon was that? It's a Glock 17 9 millimeter. Okay, and where did you purchase it? <clears throat> Bait house. Okay. And do you remember where you got the AR from? Walmart, I believe. And quadruple L3? Um, I think this is... Uh, just a purchase form. I think is what this is. Okay. And what is that? Uh, Beretta 92 9 millimeter. Okay. And that's a weapon you purchased? For my father, yes. From your father? For my father. For your father. So I want to, will you tell me, when did you guys move to Peterson Road? Early 2014, I believe. Okay. And you were still living at Peterson Road in 2015 and 2016? Yes. You lived there until May of 2017 when you... I believe it was May. Yeah, when you took your first trip to Alaska, yes. right? Okay. So you know that you have to put accurate information on those forms, correct? Yes. It's a federal offense not to when yes. you're purchasing a firearm, right? Yes. Okay. So if you could go ahead and look at it and tell us what address you put down there. It's 845 Bethel Hill Road. Okay, but that's not where you lived. Not at the time. My license hadn't expired, and when I bought my firearms, I was advised just to use what was on the driver's license I had, then taking the time to change it. Actually, that's not permitted. That's what I was advised by, okay. by the people I bought them from. They said to put the address that's on my license. is a warning right up at the top indicating that you have to uh, provide accurate information or that it's a federal offense and it's believing it's been 10 years in prison for that. Correct? Right at the top of that form. It says that uh, that it's basically to determine whether you're able to own a firearm or not.
going to turn your attention to the top of page two. You could be that paragraph. And you see that it says that you understand that making any false oral or written statement or exhibiting any false or misrepresented identification with respect to this transaction is a crime punishable as a felony. Yes. Under federal law. Yes. Okay. But on at least three, at least these three forms, you did not provide accurate information, correct? As far as the driver's license address, no. to you about the arson at Bethel Hill Road of the home, the last home. Yes. Okay. You indicated that you knew it was going to happen. Yes. Okay. And that you moved your belongings out of the home. Yes. Before it was burned. And that was right after you guys had been told that your grandmother was going to be selling the property, correct? Not directly after, no. It was, let's say, six, seven months before four or six, seven months after we've been told. Okay. And how long did you have to get out? In the beginning or last or I think in the beginning it was a year or two, something like that. Okay. I could be mistaken on and that. And then the last was what? It's the last few months. Okay. So the last few months you were there, you knew you had to get out? Yes. Okay. And so what was the plan for getting out? Because you guys couldn't sell the property, it belonged to you, right? No, the initial, my grandmother offered to let us have one of her rental properties. Okay, but you guys didn't want to do that? If we wouldn't have had anywhere else to go, that's what we were going to do. Okay. So instead, this plan becomes that you're going to burn the house down, get a good chunk of money. That was my mother's plan to burn it, yes. Okay, but you went along with it. I didn't stop them because there was no stopping them. I just told her I wanted nothing to do with that one. Okay. But then, well, actually, Jake testified that you were present inside the house when the fire was started, correct? I was not inside the house when the fire started. I was working on my truck. Okay. And you did profit from the fire, correct? If you count living on Peterson, yes. Wouldn't you count living on Peterson? Eventually, it was going to wind up being mine and my brother's. Okay. And you were able to have the money to buy that, correct? Yes. My mom and dad bought it. It's in your and your brother's name. It's in our name, but it belonged to them. It was just to skip, I think it's called inheritance taxes at the end. Okay. That way, if they passed, we didn't have to deal with that. And also because they didn't have good credit, right? Not for their part of good credit. It had nothing to do with theirs. It had the fact if me and my brother ever wanted a loan, that played into it. We could use it as collateral. It gave you good credit. It was majority to skip inheritance taxes. Okay. So trying to circumvent the system, more or less. To skip inheritance taxes. Same thing that my grandmother done by skipping my dad to leave the farm to us. Okay. So, but you, you got that house. I mean... You told us under, at the border that it's your, your brother's name, house yes. and your mom lives with you. Under legal name, the house belongs to us. Okay. The place was still technically my parents' place. Okay. And when you sold the house on Peterson, you used it to pay off all your debts, right? Yes, we paid off our debts with it. We, correct. You guys all shared the money and paid off all of your debts. We paid everybody's debts off with it, yes. yes. And you heard Tabby testify that she helped fill out the receipts and stuff afterwards, correct? If she did, I wasn't aware of it. Okay. 
were you aware that there were receipts made for the purposes of insurance? I'm aware that my mother's done it on every house. She's filled out receipts for stuff that's supposed to be in the house. Okay. And how are you aware of that? Because she's sat down for hours at tables and stuff, so I'd be coming and going, writing out receipts and looking up prices and stuff. Okay. And that basically gets used to increase the amount that you guys collect from insurance, right? Not really increase it. It goes on to like your normal insurance policy. You've got your insurance on the structure, and then you've got contents. It gets your contents check paid for because they want proof of what was in there. Okay. And you always have insurance on both. I'm pretty sure she's had insurance on both every time. Can you? It's been marked as. States Exhibit CC288R. If you could look at that and just tell me. It. Do you recognize that? I don't recognize the itself. I've never seen it, but it looks like my mom's handwriting. Okay. And and what are what is the writings of? What are the writings um, of? My understanding is just different stuff that she's wrote down for receipts. Okay. So cast iron, cash register, thirty dollars. Vintage brass hurricane lamp with milk glass scope, seventy five dollars. eBay brought three years ago. Survivor hatchet. Two of these, $49.99 each, $100 total, about two years ago, flea market, right? Right, okay. stuff like that. Okay. And again, you were aware of that. You certainly didn't tell on her. What was the question? Did you ever tell on her for no. doing those things? No. And again, but for that money, you would not have been able to buy your own home, correct? And pay cash for it? No. Correct. And in fact, you said your dad, who thinks he's so smart, uh, wasn't really smart and lost 50000 of it. He did. Okay. And that you therefore had to borrow money from your grandmother? Yes. <laughs> You said that the night of the homicides, you went to bed at 10 o'clock. 10 ish, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time. Okay. And you said that was your usual bedtime? Usually somewhere around there. Okay. All right. And so, do you recall again being interviewed at the border and saying that 
the four of you, well, the six of you, actually, your mom, your dad, your brother, yourself, Sophia and Bovine, were watching a movie, and you were up until, you didn't go to bed until 12.30. That I don't remember what time it was. Okay. Do you remember telling the border, at the border, the agents, when they asked you about what you did that night, you saying that your mom had fixed cheeseburgers for you and how delicious they were, and she makes the best, and maybe one day she could make them for them. I don't remember that now. Okay. I'm not saying I didn't say it. I just said I don't remember. Okay. So, um, you indicated that you watched a movie, a fairy movie, correct? A what? You indicated that you watched a fairy movie. I don't remember what. A movie that Sophia wanted to watch. I just, I remember watching a movie with the kids at this point. I don't remember what it was. Okay. It's been a long time. And you indicated that that is when your son would usually go to sleep as well. My son usually went to sleep between 10 and 11 usually. Okay. So from what I can remember. Is there a reason that you would lie to the people at the border? I'm not saying I did. I'm saying I don't remember what times I told them then. Okay. I mean, it may have been. I just, from my memory now, I remember going to bed around 10-ish. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I remember. Yeah, well, because now we know that Chris Sr. and Gary were being killed at 11 p.m., right? I don't know that. You don't know that? No. You don't know that that's when... Your dad had Chris call his phone, and you saw, you saw the phone calls, correct? I'm saying I wasn't there. I don't know when Chris had died. Right. Okay. You know that's what Jake said. I know my brother's time is off on everything that's been showed in here. You saw the information about the phone calls from the CIU analyst that testified here, right? Some Saying at 10.55 yes. p.m. is when those... I don't remember what time it showed on it, but some time around mm -hmm. that. Okay. And you heard your brother say that that is short, shortly or immediately upon those phone calls being made is when Chris was shot, correct? I think that's what he said, yes. Okay. So now... We know, at least according to Jake, that Chris Sr. and Gary were killed at 11 o'clock, right? I think that's what he said. Which makes your story at the border impossible, right? I, again, I don't remember exactly everything I said at the border. Well, I assume you were trying your best to tell the truth when you were interviewed at the border, correct? Yes. To, to my knowledge of what I remembered. Okay. And this was much closer to the time of the offense when you were interviewed at the border, right? It was a year and a half, I think. Well, it was May of 17, which is a, a year. A over a year. Just a little over a year, yeah. And now we're at six and a half years later? I think it's around six and a half, maybe a little more. Okay. So would you agree that your memory would have been better then than it is now as far as times go? I can't say yes or no, because I really don't remember what I said back then. Okay, I'm not interested as much as what you said, as much as do you agree that it would be more accurate back then? I can't agree yes or no, because I just don't know. Okay. You agree that you were trying to be honest with the agents. Certainly you weren't trying to lie to them. Yes, I agree on that. You certainly weren't trying to provide a cover story for you and your brother and your father and your mother. No, right? it was not. So this whole idea that we're going to coordinate our response and say that we were all together a family night, movie night, watching, watching a video. Um, surely you didn't just make this up when you told no. the people at the border. It just happened to be the same story that you guys had agreed in advance to tell. There was no agreement in advance. My dad came down. My kid didn't want him to leave.
you indicated that you watched some fairy movie that you, I think, maybe got bootlegged. Some friend of yours downloads them and then gives them to you guys. His Brandon. name was Brandon something. His name is Brandon something? I think it's Brandon. Okay. You don't know his last name? No, I never did. Okay. He's dead now, right? Yes, he OD'd, from what I understand. Okay. And how did you know him? He uh, sold uh, movies that he downloaded. Bootlegged. He uh, used to be a corrections officer and quit that and started selling movies. Okay. And you indicated that your son usually crashes out around 12.30, and then he gets up usually an hour later and wants apple juice, and then you put him back to sleep. That happens quite a bit with the apple juice thing. Okay. He usually wakes up all times of the night screaming for apple juice. And you indicated that that probably happened that night. It possible it did. He usually does. Okay. I don't remember exactly at this point, but it's possible. Okay. So your story today or yesterday is that you actually went to bed at 10. From what I remember at this point in time, I believe it was 10-ish. Okay. So despite the fact that your son usually crashes at 1230, you went to bed two and a half hours earlier? I just at this point, I remember him going to, to sleep. I just remember him, I don't remember exactly at what time at this point. Okay. So again, would you agree that your recollection of when your son usually went to sleep, being 12.30 in the morning, would be more accurate than now? Not 12.30 in the morning. Well, 12.30 a.m. I mean, shortly after midnight, half hour after midnight. That's sometimes majority of it sometimes. Okay. I mean, you said usually crashes. Yeah. Usually that's when he like runs himself out. His normal go to bed time is earlier than that, but sometimes he winds himself up. Okay. And you indicated that you were all four there watching this movie. Yes. Okay. So how could Jake and your father have been up on the hill killing Chris Sr. and Gary less than an hour after you went into your bedroom? I can't answer that. I don't know. Okay. But your story is they were just sitting there watching the movie with you. And then did you fall immediately asleep? I can't remember at this point in time. Okay. And again, would you agree that probably your recollection back then is better than it is now? It's a possibility. Okay. Do you remember telling the agents that you usually look at Facebook for about an hour after you go to bed? Sometimes I do. I don't remember telling them that, but sometimes I do. Okay. And do you also remember that you said there's no way they could have left that night without you hearing them? I remember. I don't believe they I, I remember. I believe I told them I couldn't see them getting down the stairs without me hearing them. Okay. If I remember, it you might actually, not be in that wording. Yeah. You actually insisted on it and said it more than 15 times to the agents at the border. I remember saying a lot. I don't remember how many times. Okay. So you were adamant that there was no way, because of where your bedroom is in that house, that anybody could have left that night without you knowing that even when the neighbor down the street gets in their vehicle and leaves, it wakes you up. The neighbor down the street drives a Dodge Diesel like we did. Right. Okay. And also because of where your bedroom's located with the stairs, anyone leaving from the upstairs. I always heard my mom and my kids come down the stairs because they sound like I heard a buffalo coming down it. Yeah. And you indicated your dad had gone up the stairs that night with your mom to go to bed. I don't remember on that. He okay. might have, but I don't remember. So you don't remember now. I but don't back remember. in 2017, when you were talked to with the agents at the border, when you were trying your best to be honest, right? Yes. 
you told them that your dad went upstairs and went to bed with your mother? It's a possibility. I don't remember saying that, but I might have. Okay. Was that true? I just, I don't remember the statement. I don't remember. I'm seeing. asking you, is it true that your dad went upstairs with your mother? At this point, I don't know because I don't remember. Okay. And then you indicated that you got up around 8.30 or 9 the next day, correct? I remember around daylight, if I remember now, but it could be wrong. Okay. And at no point did you indicate to the agents at the border that your brother was already up and it surprised you because usually you're the first one up. They'd never ask that. Okay. Not to my knowledge. They asked you what you did. They asked you what you had for dinner. They asked me what I did that morning. I went to tear down the building. Okay. You indicated they asked you what time you got up. I don't remember that part. You agree that you owned numerous SKSs, correct? Yes, more than I can put a number on. Okay. And you would agree that when the search was done at the Flying W at your grandparents' home where you were storing your guns, correct? Yes. That an SKS was not among those weapons, correct? No, it was not. And you indicated that your brother had owned an SKS as well. Yes. And you recall that he did not like the SKS, correct? I recall that's what he said. Okay. That it jammed on him? An older version SKS. Okay. Not the one that he owned at last. And where did that SKS go that you owned? Ben McCann has it. Actually, Ben McCann has the AR-15, is what you told us. He has it, too, okay. with multiple other guns that I've sold him. Okay. Well, curiously, you left that SKS out of the list of guns you owned and out of the list of the guns that you gave to Ben McCann when you were interviewed at the border. That SKS was sold long before that, okay. in <laughs> roughly middle 2015. But you did not indicate that to the agents at the border, correct? They never asked me about an SKS. They asked you what guns you owned. And I, if my memory serves me right, around the time of the murders. And you gave a long list. Yes. Including this AR-15. Yes. And at no point did you mention the SKS. Because it was gone before that. And when Special Agent Scheider wanted to talk to you about that gun list that had the SKS under your name, did you talk to him about it? I told him to talk to my attorney, and he never asked about an SKS. He asked about a Colt 22. Okay, but he sent the gun list to you, correct? Yes, but he didn't and ask about anything. And you're clearly aware that the SKS is listed under your name, correct? At that point in time, I had no knowledge of an SKS being used in this. And he had never asked me about any SKS or anything other than that Colt 22 on that list. Mm -hmm. You certainly became aware of that once we started talking to people, correct? Aware of what? That the SKS was of interest. I don't remember becoming aware of that until after I was arrested. Did you ever tell us that that SKS was at Ben McCann's? You can never ask. Have you ever told us that? Nobody's ever asked me, so it's a no.
Have you ever owned a 1911-22? No. Has your brother ever owned one? To my knowledge, no. So his testimony that he had this for more than a year, you were unaware of that? If he's owned it that long, I didn't know about it. Okay. Well, obviously, there's a picture of him holding that weapon in 2015. Now I see what the picture is his. But back then, I didn't think but it was his. But he hid it from you. What is it? He hid it from you? If he's had it that long, he must have. Oh, or why, he just, just out of curiosity, why him. would he do that? Because you guys keep those gu your guns in your safe, right? According to my brother's statement, he said that he'd owned every one of them guns on, on that list. And I've not seen over half of what's under his name. Okay. You failed to answer the question. Okay. You guys keep your guns in your safe, correct? Most of them. You just got done telling me what guns your brother owned and while well, you went through the list with your attorney when you yeah. were thing and you knew guns that he owned, yes. right? Some of them. So you're saying he owns guns you don't know of? I'm saying it's possible. I've owned hundreds of guns that For he didn't For over a own. year, he owned a gun, and you were oblivious to it. It's very well possible. known him to own a 1911 that is not O.D. Green? Yes. When? Several of them. His first one was a Springfield. After that, he had a original Colt 1911, and after that, he had a Llama. So you do tend to know what guns he has? I know some of the firearms he's owned. Sure. You would agree with me that you are a self-proclaimed hunting junkie. Yes. Correct? Okay. And by that, that's one of your favorite hobbies to do in life. Is that fair? I would say it's my number one favorite. Okay. And you indicated you hunted more than your brother did. Probably a hundred times more than he did. And he testified that you kind of did the investment in hunting or the research approach to it, where you would put up trail, cram, uh, trail cams and have grow plots and, and, uh, or feed plots and, you know, study the traveling of the animals, et cetera. Yes, correct? I spent thousands of dollars on deer. Okay. <clears throat> and you sometimes hunted at night with, with Chris. And Randa? That started at Peterson, and it wasn't sometimes, it was the majority at that time. Okay. The majority of times when you hunted, it would be after, at night or with Chris and Randa? After moving to Peterson, it would be both to that. Okay. Obviously, Jake accompanied you some, some of those times, correct? I mean, with he talked the pretty winter, elaborately about... The Winter Olympics. He's been three times that I know of. And how many times would you say you've gone? So many, I couldn't put a number on it. Okay. <clears throat> Not with any accuracy. And Winter Olympics is code for hunting at night or yes. poaching. Okay. And in addition to um, your father talking, having you spot police officers and, tra and surveillance um, stuff, um, Etc. Did he also um, have you watch what you say, especially in areas or situations where you could be being recorded or listened to? My whole life. Okay. And you indicated that Jake's gone maybe three times um, hunting at night. How many times in your life would you say you've done that? Me hunting at night. I can't put an accurate number, but I'd say thousands. Okay. I think it was Chris that said that, that of the groups, whenever he's gone, that you're the best hunter. Would you agree with that? I 
believe Chris said that I am the best hunter. I don't think he said whenever he's gone. Okay. He just said that you are the best hunter? Yes. Okay. I could be wrong with that statement from him, but that's what I believe he said. And would you say that you um, also um, pride yourself on being a very good mechanic? Yes. Okay. And specifically a diesel mechanic, correct? Yes. I'm worthless on the gas. And I think you indicated again to the agents that uh, you referred yourself to as a, de a hunting and diesel junkie. Yes. Okay. Was Jake as good of a mechanic as you were? As a diesel mechanic? No. Okay. What about a gas mechanic? Uh, no, but he was a really good body man. <clears throat> what do you mean by that? He was good at doing body work. You talked about Jake being um, more obedient. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And that he did his chores. Yes. Okay. Um, that he played with action figures when he was a boy. I wouldn't call it a boy up until his mid-teens. Okay. But he would go along with you hunting and fishing and four-wheeling and such, correct? On um, very few occasions. Maybe 10% of the time at most. Okay. As far as hunting goes? As far as hunting goes, yes. Okay. Fishing? Uh, fishing, he might have went 20-30% of the time. When we was really young, he just sat on the bank and played with action figures. When we got older, he might throw a line in the water, but he spent the time bent over his phone. And you referred to him as a religious fanatic. Yes. Correct. Okay. And that he had a pesky habit of telling on himself and you if you guys broke the rules of your parents. As a child, yes. Okay. So he would willingly, voluntarily break the rules, but then when he got back home, he would tell on not just himself, but you as well. In reality, he wasn't really the one breaking the rules. It was me doing it and my uncle, and he just ran back to tell mom. Okay. And the rules that you would break that he would tell on? Not put the four-wheeler on the road or uh, not go over to this person's farm across the road because you've got to pass the paved road and stuff like that. Okay. I believe yesterday you said that he did that too. Correct? Sometimes he'd tag along, but very seldom. He'd go like But he would put the four-wheeler on the road, too, even when you weren't supposed to. Occasionally, yes. Okay. When but he then he would tell on himself. He would tell on me and my uncle and not put his name in it. Even though it got found out he was in it, too, eventually, then he just didn't get no trouble. We did. But he wasn't lying. As to... You actually did put the four-wheeler on Yes, we did. But when he would say that me and my uncle made him go with us, that was where he lied to my mother with, and she always believed him. Okay. And you actually talk about that with Jake 
um, again, about how his, my whole life I've been in trouble with you because of you telling on everything and telling honesty. Yeah. And everybody says my anger mouth is going to get us in trouble, but it's always been your honesty that gets us in trouble, yes. correct? And you say, children, you have to tell on yourself. Children, you have to tell on me. Yeah, as we're children. That's what I'm referring to as, as when we're children. And you also tell him that he should have gotten rid of the phone and he should have smashed the laptop, correct? Yes. Okay. And again, that's because we got a lot of evidence from those items. My, my understanding of it was that he kept saying you guys were twisting stuff that you found on it to try and frame him. You would agree that your mother was a mother figure to your son? I would agree that he looked at her as a mother figure. She was the only woman in the house. Okay. And you would be gone? Five days a week, yes. Five days a week. And then when you'd come home, you'd often go hunting? Yes. So she was after raising I was, him? After I was working for r &L, when I'd come home, I spent all day with my son and hunted all night with Chris. Okay. And so when did you sleep? about an hour a night between morning and earlier morning when I come back with Chris. Okay. Same schedule I had when I was in R&L's truck. One, two hours a night is what I lived on. That was not company policy though, right? No, it is not. You're supposed to get way more sleep than that. You're supposed to have at least eight hours. Okay. And you did more than just hunting at night with Chris as well, correct? You would scrap, go scrapping at night with him as no, well? that was during the daytime. During the daytime on the weekends? Yes. Okay. You take your son with you? Yes. Multiple times I took my son with me to do that. Okay. So you never went scrapping with Chris at night? No. Okay. And you would get um, catalytic converters, correct? Yes. Okay. And how would you get those? So when you go around people's yards, I mean, I go through Waverly here and show you a couple thousand of them. You'll see somebody with a junk car sitting up on blocks, and you either trade a gun for it or you buy it outright. If the car's got aluminum wheels, you take the aluminum wheels off. If it's got a battery left in it, you take the battery out. If it's still got the converter on it, you cut the converter off. The batteries, the wheels, and the converters get sold separately, and the car gets sold as car body weight. Okay. And is this during the time that sometimes then they would report these stolen or not? Converters have always been stolen off of new cars for years. And at one time you had like 15 of them. I've had more than that at one point in time. Okay. My Uncle Chris and his, his fathers had a couple hundred of them before at one point in time. Okay. They, we would stock them up for six months, a year, however long you want to stockpile them. And either we would haul them ourselves to Columbus and sell them, or we would sell them to people that my uh, uncle knew or his dad knew that would haul them themselves, and we'd just take a discount so we didn't have to haul them all the way up there. Okay. And you said then the cars would be sold for body weight? Yes. Okay. Did you ever put additional uh, weight in the car to...? Sometimes you throw washers and dryers in there. Sometimes you throw scrap metal, tin, whatever you can throw in it to add weight. Okay. Any non-metal thing you would add? Not to my knowledge, just weight. Okay. Anything that was metal, aluminum, steel, anything to add weight to it. Did you or your uncle ever get in trouble for doing that? I believe my uncle, his dad, and Derek got in trouble for having two or three of them without titles at one point. But my understanding of that is they had a scrapper's license and was allowed to do that. I don't know that real logistics of it, but... Okay. Do you have a scrapper's license? No, I do not. My understanding, the purpose of having one was so you didn't have to have a title to scrap a car. And I didn't ever have a reason for having one. Every one I bought had a title with it.
back to your mother. Um, did your son consider her his mother? To my knowledge, I don't think I know as he called her Amity Mommy. That's okay. what he started with. All right. And in fact, you got upset when Jake told Sophia that she could call Beth Ann Mommy. Not that she could call Beth Mommy, but he was forcing her to call her Mommy. Okay, well, that's not really what you said to him, though, because what you may said... may have been in different words, but that's what he was trying to do to her. Okay. But what you actually said to him is that now you have to go home and tell your son the cold, hard truth that your mom is not his mom. That's not what I was having to tell him the cold, hard truth, though. He knew his mother was Tabby. I've told him that many a times. But now I had to go home and explain to him why his mother was not in his life. He didn't know Tabby wasn't in his life? He knew Tabby was his mom, but he hadn't seen her in over a year. Okay, I'm, I'm very confused right now. Your son all his life knew Tabby that was his mom. Far back as I can know, I've explained to him that his mom had issues. So why did you have to explain that to him again? Because at this point, he wanted to know the real reason as to why his mom wasn't in his life. Because Sophie was going around saying that she had a new mommy and he didn't. Okay. So this whole thing about the granny and, um, you know, being upset that Sophie had explained that um, that was his grandmother. It was over me having to explain to Vine why Tabby had left. And it's not easy to explain to a five-year-old those circumstances. Well, you had already explained to him that Mommy had issues. That was in the beginning. Now he's older with more understanding. This is the call where you said she can't keep her nose out of somebody else's life. She being Sophie. Yes. And Jake says, George, she's four years old. Yes. You said she does anything deliberately to try and crush him deliberately. Bitch got to ruin everything. You referred to your niece, your four-year-old niece, as a bitch because Would she you? was like explanation Tell I've explained this before five six days with no sleep and caffeine you say stuff you don't really mean yeah you said a lot of things it makes you, you irritable mean. sure and she went around telling my son that she had a new mom and he didn't you called her a bitch you Remember calling your grandmother, Frederica, a crazy whore? I don't remember that. You don't remember telling your mom to calm that crazy whore down? I don't remember that conversation. Am I saying it's possible? Yeah, I've probably said something like that. Okay. I've said a lot of stuff in my being upset that I really didn't mean, but I've said it because I've been days without sleep and massive amounts of caffeine. Sure. And, I mean, you called Randa, I think, a lazy crack whore, I think. I've called her that more than once. Okay. And you told the agents at the border that you um, thought that Hannah turned into a whore. From what everybody else was saying. Okay. And that was after she had left Jake. 
Well, everybody else was saying after she left Jake. To my understanding, I don't think she ever really did, but that's what everybody else was saying. Okay. And you called, certainly called Tabby a whore. Many a times. And referred to Beth Ann as a whore, just like Tabby. Many a times. despite the fact that you say that um, your mother thinks that she's better than everybody else and you have your differences, you certainly also have some strong areas that you guys agree on, correct? Can you be more specific on sure. that? I mean, you indicated that you severely, severely hate anybody who hurts a child. Yeah. Okay. And that's the same with your mother, correct? I, I assume it is. Well, now you know that that is, right? My mom has paranoia issues. She has paranoia issues. Yes. Okay. She thought that um, Sophia was being molested, correct? That's what she's claiming. Okay. And she thought that uh, Beth Ann molested Sophia. That's what Sophia said. Okay. And so you believe that? Did you I believe, believe that she'd that, done it? Yeah. I believed it was possible. I did not know 100% whether she did or not, but I believed it was possible. Okay. Instead of taking the chance, I just wanted her out of the house. Right. And... You also believed that she was going to kidnap your son and sell them to a cult in Texas. From what she made the statement before about belonging to that cult, yes. That was when she was a child. My understanding, Correct. she was early teens, was my understanding. Okay. A decade prior, at least. I don't know exactly how long. Okay. But you were concerned about that. Yes. Okay. You also thought that she was getting up in the middle of the night and unlocking that front door. You guys had a, a bar over the front door? Us, technically? No, but that was the locking system for the door when my grandfather had it. Okay. But we there locked was it every a night. Bar. Yes, okay. that's what locked the door every night. Okay. And you believed that she was getting up in the middle of the night and intentionally unlocking that door, removing the bar from the door, so that people could come into the house in the middle of the night and potentially harm you and the children. I did not believe she was leaving it open intentionally to let people come in. I believe she was just leaving it unlocked and there was a possibility somebody could come in because my grandfather had had that door kicked in before. Okay, not leaving it unlocked. Getting up in the middle of the night and unlocking it. Yes. Okay. That's what you believed. Yes. Okay. And so did your mother. Yes. Okay. And your mother also was worried about Beth Ann molesting Sophia. Yes. And potentially bovine. Yes. Okay. And both you and your mother also believed she could be a BCI spy. Yes, we were advised by Clark of that. And how much money did you give to Clark? I don't remember how much Clark was paid. My grandmother paid him. Okay. Do you remember indicating that you had given him $10,000? I believe that was for something else. I believe that was for me and Tabby's divorce that I paid him. I don't believe it was for this. I could be mistaken, but I believe it was for... Yeah, because not... you were upset because he was preoccupied with something else and he wasn't responding. And so you indicated, I paid him $10,000. I expect him to respond to us and I'll show up at his door if I have to. I don't remember saying that, I might have. <clears throat> you hired Barbara Moore 
for your divorce with Tabitha. Yes. Okay. So you wouldn't have given Clark ten thousand dollars for Tabitha. When this here, when I moved back to Alaska, I hired Clark separately from this case for Tabby. Okay. And you gave him ten thousand dollars? I don't remember the exact price. He never filed anything. Uh, yes, he's supposed to have. We had, Tabby and I had court in um, Adams County, I believe. Okay. Like three weeks after I got arrested, we had a court here and there. And Mr. Clark represented you? He was supposed to, I never got there. Okay. You indicated that you hired him with the understanding that he was going to represent you if you got arrested. In the beginning, for this case, yes. And you would agree that both you and your mother believed that if you're molested as a child, and especially if you don't tell anybody or do anything to the person who did that to you, that that puts any child that you have at risk. I wouldn't agree with if they don't do anything, but if they don't get therapy and work on their issues, I believe it puts them at risk. And specifically regarding, well, Tabitha's sisters, you didn't want them around, correct? No, no, and neither no. did your mother, correct? I don't, I don't think my mother ever liked Tabby's family. Okay. And you know that because first you were looking at Tabitha's Facebook, correct? At which point in time? in 2015 when tabby and i split up and we were trying to fix things she tried giving me her password for her facebook so that we could basically she could prove that she wasn't still sleeping with her dad or her best friend's dad and i didn't look at it for a week or two and finally i logged into it and anybody who uses facebook it's got a like bar that comes across this as people you may know and she had a picture of her that came across it with a different name under it, and the only friend was her best friend's dad. After that, that's the night that I went to t talk to Tabby and tell her, you know, you're still doing this, so we're just gonna go through with the divorce and it's over. That's the last time I was on her Facebook page. So when your mother said she took over for you. She never took over for me. I never gave her that password. So how did she get it? I can't answer that. I don't know. Did you just read your mind? I don't know on that one. I can answer how she got two or three of the other ones. Okay. I'm interested in Tabitha's. That's because what I'm saying, two or three You're indicating other pages. you had Tabitha's password. <coughs> yes. Even though Tabitha said she never gave you her password. She gave it to me when we split up. Okay. But she said, so when you split up, she gives you her password, <coughs> even though you had assaulted her. Be, I have never assaulted Tabby. She assaulted me that night. Okay. <coughs> so, let's go to that night. You testified here today that, yes. or yesterday, that she got upset. Yes, was fine. And she bit you. That was after she initially got upset with fine. Okay. And she bit you. Yes. She just walk up and bite you? What were you doing at the time she bit you? I tried to give her a hug to calm her down like I usually do. Okay. A hug or were you restraining her? A <clears> hug. <throat> what I always did. Okay. But that loving act, she bit you? Yes. Okay. She has bad bipolar fits. Okay. And you left out of your story where your mother said she was going to get her gun. It's not in that entirely different event. Would you like this other event explained? No, not at this moment. What I would like is for you to tell me if your mother threatened to get a gun that night that Tabby left. Not the night Tabby left, no. Okay. So your mother is lying that she said that? Yes. And Tabby is lying? 
that she said that? Yes. Okay. You're telling the truth. Yes. And you also left out of your story that your mother threw a two by four at her. Entirely different event. Is Talitha afraid of the dark? To my knowledge, not really. 50-50. Some days she'd say she was, some days she said she wasn't. I just always thought that she was making it up. But Okay. But either way, you agree that she fled that night? I agree she left that night. And she never came back? She went to her mother's after that. Did she ever come back? To live at the house? Yes. To live there, no. She came back to visit her son because that was the only place she could visit with her son. Correct? She came back to visit Vine many a times, went out to the movies and dinner with me many a times after that. And she gets on a bike and pedals to the gas station. Yes. And on her way there, you and Jake pull up beside her and she tells you she's going to go call her mother. Correct? She didn't tell me she was going to go call her mother. What did she say? I tried getting her to get back in the car with me, and she wouldn't do it. And how did you try to I get I kept her? asking her to get in the car and calm down. We'd go back to the house and talk things over. Mm -hmm. Okay. But she didn't. No. Okay. So she gets to the gas station, and you indicated you called the police. I believe I called them, yes. Because you were concerned for her safety. Yes, she's tried to kill herself many a times, and she was having one of the bigger of her wig outfits I'd ever seen. But she made it to a public place at that point, correct? Yes. Okay. And you call the police, and you file a complaint against her. I felt it was the only way to get her any kind of help. Is to say that she assaulted you. They asked that when they got there. They asked what happened. So you didn't say, I'm worried about her. She's tried to kill herself before. Could you please get her some help? I've told you. You said, about she her. assaulted me, and I want to file a criminal complaint. I told you I didn't want press charges on her. But they you did me. press charges against her. No, I didn't. They asked if I wanted to press charges. I said no. There were charges filed against her, and you took her to the court to take care of those. Correct? Uh, you said you took her to the court to take I care of I took her to that. the courthouse to pay her fines. I don't know what the fines were for, but the officer asked me if I wanted to press charges, and I said no. Okay. You felt you needed to press charges because you were worried she was going to tell the police what had happened, that you actually assaulted her, and that your mother threatened to get a gun because then you wouldn't get custody of your son. Correct? No. Okay. You heard Jake and your mother both say that that was the motive. And my mom and brother are lying to you. They have been like everybody else. Like everybody else is lying. Yeah. Like Tabitha's lying. Tabby. Like Chelsea's lying. Like I everybody that Chelsea talked about Frankie's lying. lying. Everybody Chelsea. is lying except for you. I did not say Chelsea was lying. I said she's mistaken. Right. And even though you've not managed to tell us anything consistent with what you told the agents at the border in 2017, you're the one that's telling the truth. Can you say that again, please? I said, even though you're the one that has not been able to tell us anything consistent with what you told the agents at the border, you're the one who's telling the truth. I don't remember exactly everything I said at the border. That's not the question. The question is, what you're saying to us today is not consistent with what you said at the border. It, I can't say if it is or not, because I don't remember everything I've said there. But everybody else is lying. I'm saying that my mom and Tabby and Jake's lying about that night, where they're mistaken one. They're confusing two different events into one. Would this be a good time to take the... Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, we will be in recess until 1.30 for lunch. Uh, while you're at lunch recess, do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit this case to be discussed with you or in your presence by anyone. 
do not form or express an opinion concerning the case, do no research concerning the case, either as to the facts or as to the law from any source at all, do not read, view, or listen to any reports or accounts of this case from any source at all, and have no contact with participants in the case, including parties, counsel, or witnesses. Does counsel for either side have anything you wish to place on the record before our lunch recess? No, Your Honor, thank you. Then we are in recess until 1.30. Jury to assemble at the jury room at that time.
Is counsel for each side ready to have the jury brought? Yes. Go ahead and bring it, Jason. You may be seated. The state of Ohio's attorney may resume cross-examination. George, do you remember buying a Caltech 22 um, pistol at a gun show at the Westland Mall in 2015? I don't know where that's at. I remember buying a Caltech 22, yes. Okay, at a gun show? Yes. Okay, and you don't remember exactly where the gun show was? I don't remember where it was at, no. Okay. Um, have you ever been to a gun show at the Westland Mall? I don't know where the Westland Mall is. Okay. Near Columbus? Not very well. Okay. Handing you what's been marked as quadruple M1. Um, can you tell us if you recommend that? Um, it's a PMR I bought for my father. Say it again. It's a Caltech PMR that I bought for my father. Okay. And what is the date on that? Date purchased. August 10th, 2017. No. Or, sorry. sorry. <laughs> that might be completion, sorry. Yeah. Um, Purchase date no. there. Sorry. Uh, January 31st, 2015. And on that, you actually used 260 Peterson Road, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And you indicated that was for your father? Yes. And do you recall if your father was with you at that on that day? I believe he was. Okay. And everybody was with you? Is that? I remember my dad being there. Okay. 
pain you has been marked as quadruple M2. Um, can you look at that as a two-page document? It looks like another young receipt for my brother. Okay. And the date on that was? Um, hang on. I think on this separate page. Uh, 131.15. Okay. And can you tell us where that was? Uh, Westland Mall. Okay. And what? Do you know what kind of gun that is? I just don't think it says on here. much more of a description than that, but it's the box is shot. Uh, it says long gun, rifles or shotguns. Okay. And then, well, do you remember, do you remember your brother being with you? I don't day? particularly remember him being there that day. I remember my father, but. Okay. And quadruple M3. Again, if you can tell us the purchase date on that. Appropriate date. Left hand, bottom left hand. 131.15. Same date? Yes. Okay. And what is that gun? Um, uh, Colt real gun. Or Walter Colt, right? Yes. 1911? Yes. Bought that same day? That's what that says, yes. Okay. So, you're all three at the same gun show. Dave fires two guns, you buy a gun for your father. I you bought one. Don't, don't remember that 1911-22? I've never seen it. Never seen it? Never seen it. I don't even remember my brother being there that day. I'm not saying he wasn't, but I don't remember him being there. You don't deny that, that... I'm not saying that he wasn't there. I'm just saying I don't remember him being there. And how long of a drive is it to Columbus from here, or from where you lived at Peterson Road? Maybe an hour and a half. Okay. Maybe. You've certainly gone to gun shows before with Jake and your brother. I've gone to gun shows with my dad, my brother, my uncle. I've gone to them by myself. Many of them. Okay. You obviously would have driven together, correct? I, I remember my dad going with me. I don't remember my brother, but... If he was there, he might have, he might not have. I can't answer it because I don't remember him being there. Okay. But you remember that that gun was for your father? The Celtic, yes. Yeah. That's particularly why my father and I went to that gun show was to buy that gun. Okay. And Jake just happened to be at the same place buying two guns, but you don't remember those I guns. I don't remember him being all. there. And you don't remember the 1911-22 that was used to kill five of these I've never seen that gun. No, I've never seen it. Okay. 
you talked about when you get drinking your caffeine, uh, you just start ranting, basically, correct? Drinking and taking caffeine. It's two, two things together. Drinking alcohol? No. Red Bulls, Monsters, Stackers. Stackers are a, ta a capsule. So taking, oh, and taking caffeine capsules. Yes. Okay. Is that what back and bodies are? No. What are back and bodies? They're like a joint relief pill thing. Okay. Um, and do you recall uh, making numerous threats uh, to what you would do to Special Agent Shire? Yeah.
So if we need to look at something, we can go back to chain. Your Honor, I will uh, withdraw that question for now as far as that specific, although I will still um, ask for another question. All right. Um, you indicated that you wanted to kill Special Agent Scheider, correct? I said that, yes. Okay. Jake didn't threaten him. What is it? Jake did not threaten him. Not to my knowledge. You recall uh, dyeing your hair the week of the homicides? I do not ever remember dyeing my hair. Okay. So then Chris Newcomb is mistaken? I'm saying I don't remember dyeing my hair. Okay. Randa and Chris have accused me of dyeing my beard before too and I've never done it. Okay. So they're mistaken? Yes. Okay. My not hair. lying? No, they're mistaken on that. Okay. And at the same time that your brother dyed his hair? I don't know exact dates my brother dyed his hair. Okay. But I you remember he, him dyeing his hair? Yes, he dyed his hair. To look like Norman Reedus? Yes. Okay. And you recall your <clears throat> uncle saying that he laughed at you guys and told you you looked ridiculous? I recall him saying that, yes. Okay. Did you ever have a motorcycle endorsement? What is it? You never had a motorcycle endorsement on your driver's license, did no, you? No, I have not. Okay. And you did not own a motorcycle in 2016, correct? Yes, I did. Not okay. in my name. Not in your name? No, it was still in my father's name. He gave it to me. Okay. And do you have pictures of you on that motorcycle? I believe I do somewhere. Okay. Nothing we've seen. I don't know if you've seen them or not. In the courtroom? In here, no. And you indicated um, when you were talking to your brother um, about that. First of all, that mask that was purchased in April of 16 was for you, correct? Which mask? The Winter Soldier mask. Yes. Okay. And that's from what? What's a Winter Soldier mask from? It's a replica of Bucky Barnes' mask. And Bucky Barnes is who? A character off of a Marvel movie. A Marvel movie? Yes. And you were buying that for yourself? Yes. But he ordered it for you? Yes. Okay. You indicated that you never, you never knew your mom was monitoring Facebook for you? I did not say that she was monitoring it for me. I knew she was monitoring it, yes. Okay. You knew she was monitoring Tabitha's Facebook? Yes. And Tess's Facebook? I didn't particularly know about Tess's, no. Jake also asked Hannah to try to get any information she could regarding Tabitha, correct? I know Hannah was doing that, yes. Okay. And Jake would tell you anything that Hannah learned about Tabitha? And so would Hannah. And so would Hannah. So yes. Hannah and Jake would tell you things that they had discovered um, regarding Tabitha so you could, again, make sure that she did not get custody of 
fault line. Correct? I don't know what their reasonings were for it. I tried getting them to stop multiple times. They wouldn't do it. Really? Yes. So you tried to talk them out of that? Yes. I tried getting my mom and my brother and everybody to stop monitoring Tabby. They wouldn't do it. Oh, okay. Um, so you weren't worried then about her getting custody? Her getting full custody? No. And you weren't worried about her having unsupervised visits? I didn't want my son to have unsupervised visits with her, no, not until she straightened her life up. Okay. And so, so you didn't have use for any of that information they were getting for you? I didn't see no reason to have any of it. Okay. And you recall your mom uh, calling your brother in June of 18 saying that uh, Tabby was using her old Facebook pat page and she needed to get the password from you again. I recall seeing that in here. And hearing it in here. Yes. Yes. But they never, my brother never asked me that from what I can remember. Okay. Nor would I have gave it to her if I even could have remembered it. Because you didn't think that was appropriate. I didn't think she needed to be monitoring Tabby's page. And you never gave her that Facebook password no. to begin with? She not, the, not in the beginning, no. Not in the beginning? No. The only face, Facebook password I've ever had, I never gave to her. It was for when we first split up. Okay. So your mom just guessed it? I don't know how she got it. The whole family was participating in this one-year abandonment process, right? I don't know what you mean by participating. Well, you heard the testimony that uh, from your mother and from your brother that you guys were trying to stay out of uh, Tabby's purview until June of I, 17, correct? I don't know why they were trying to stay out. The only thing I was understanding of was I didn't have to contact her. That's what my attorney advised me. I did not have to be the one to contact her. But if she knew where you were, then she would probably contact you if she knew you were back in Ohio, wouldn't she? I assume she knew I was here. Okay, so what you're telling us is that your mother and your brother, to the extent that they even had Beth Ann use the Oak Hill address, just doing that on their own, you had no knowledge or, or desire for them to do that. I had no knowledge that Beth ever used an Oak Hill address. Okay, you're not answering my question. Isn't it true that you knew and everyone was participating in trying to keep your address unknown at the time that you came back to Ohio? I know that my mom and brother were trying to keep their address hidden and particularly not let Ryan or law enforcement know they were back. Okay. And you also used a fictitious address. For the purpose of RNO, I believe it was. And you guys also called the State Highway Patrol and reported that Tabitha had drugs Jeff, in her car. That's not the testimony. That's not the testimony. It kind of it's is. Well, you, I'll let you ask the question. He, he can. can and you, you guys called the State Highway Patrol to report that Tabitha had Jeff, drugs in her car. Jeff, it's a question. He's allowed you to guys. answer it. Who is you guys? <laughs> well, if he doesn't understand the question, he can ask for clarification, Your Honor. Objection is a fake question. Oh my gosh. Well, can, can you can you clarify the question for him then? If, if that's the objection, is the use of that term, then I'll sustain it. Did. You, you and your mother called the State Highway Patrol to report that Tabitha had drugs in her vehicle. No, I did not. Did your mother? To my knowledge, I did not know about it until she testified so about it. She walked in here. in here. So again, she's just gratuitously doing this, and you have no idea about I it. I did not know that she had done that task. Didn't discuss it at all. No. So. When Beth Ann is in your midst, that's the first time you and your mother ever talk about this kind of stuff. 
define what kind of stuff you're talking about. Concerns about the children and their safety and protecting bovine from people like Tabitha and her family. I've talked about her Tabby's mom and her stepdad. And protecting bovine from Tabitha and her family. Not particularly from Tabby, but from her stepdad and her family. And her sisters. I didn't want her sisters around him, no. Her sisters who were victims of child molestation. You did not want your son around them. No, because they felt it was all right for what had happened to them. That happens to every child, and they'll get over it. What about that makes you think they are a threat to the safety of your child? Because their mother did the same thing because it happened to her, and it happened to their, their mother's children, which is Tabby and her sisters, and it just keeps going generation to generation. So you thought one of her sisters might molest your son? At one point, it's a possibility that it could happen. And your mother shared those concerns with you? Yes. You all were concerned about that? I don't know about you all, but my mother and myself was. Okay. And you also knew that Hannah had been raped and nobody had done anything about it? I knew that Hannah had something done to her, but I don't know exactly what. Sexually molested? I know it was of that nature, but I didn't know exactly how far it went or what it was. Okay. So you don't know the details of the acts that were committed against her, but no. you do know that nobody did anything about it? Yes. Okay. And so presumably she also was a threat? No. Tabby was? Tabby believed it was right that every child goes through it. Hannah did not. So you talked to Hannah about it? Hannah said that she My would My question is yes or no? Yes. Your mother was also a victim of sexual assault, correct? I did not know it was sexual assault until this began. I know that she had had something happen to her, but I didn't know what. Okay. You now know? I now know, yes. Okay. And she also did not do anything about it? From my understanding, no. You indicated that your mother would always side with Jake, right? Yes. Except, I'm sure you will admit, when it came to Beth Ann. That, I believe the first time that she ever sided, sided with me. And she sided with you against Jake, correct? Yes, yes on Beth, yes. Yes, because Jake very much wanted to continue his relationship and his marriage with Beth, but you and your mother were not having it. I just didn't want Beth in the house. Okay. So you wanted him to manage to conduct his marriage without living in the same house as her? That is not what I said. I technically meant for kicking him out, too. Okay. So you were going to kick your brother and Beth Ann that was the intention. out of the house, and you were going to keep Sophia with you. I felt she would have been safer than with Jake. And that was because? Because I didn't feel Beth was safe around her. Okay. And you didn't feel that Jake was protecting Sophia? Correct. And you love your niece? Yes. And you'd protect her? Yes. Okay. You love your son? Yes. you protect him? Yes. And at that time, even Jake was a threat to the safety of Sophia in your eyes. I believe he was not paying attention to her or putting her first. Okay. And you were critical of him for a lot of things, right? Yes. Regarding Beth. And, and one of those was um, when he got back from work, he would, Beth would run and hug him before Sophia could ever get to him. 
Yes, and a couple of times she would bump Sophie out of the way just to get her to not get there first. Like bumped her, like knocked her to the ground, or? Yes. Knocked Sophia to the ground. Yes, Sophie came off her feet a couple Sophia of times. Sophia to Jake. I think yesterday you said that Jake didn't hug anybody except Sophia, but now it's also Beth Ann. I was referring to when we first was living in Peterson and left. When you were living at Peterson, he never hugged anybody except Sophia. That's the only person I've ever seen him at Peterson or my younger years that he would ever give a hug to. Okay. You heard him indi indicate that he was hoping to hug you and your father and your mother before you all went to prison. It's very shocking considering he doesn't like to be touched. Do you remember having a conversation with your mother regarding Randa getting into various Facebook groups? Uh, I believe it was topics. It might have been Facebook. Okay. And you told her that Randa got into one of those. She said she didn't see nothing that looks very important, but if you want to scan through it, meaning your mother, um, you can when you see her. Yes, right? I was kind of like a relay in between, basically. Right. My mom had asked Randa to monitor some Facebook thing, and Randa had told me to tell her she got into one. Okay. So you were aware of that Facebook monitoring? <clears throat> it wasn't an actual Facebook account. It was a group that Randa got into. Okay. And you saw all those screenshots. What I don't know, thousands of screenshots that your mother took, and she printed those out? I've not seen more than one or two screenshots from my mother in the very beginning. Okay, in the very beginning. Yes, when she started monitoring Tabby's page, I told her I didn't want her doing it no more. Okay, and, and why didn't you want her to again? Because I had no reason for her to monitor Tabby's page. I didn't feel she had a reason to. Okay, because you respect Tabby's privacy, is that why? Because it's Tabby's page. I had no reason to be anywhere near it after she said that we were, you know, basically not going to fix things. But you know, in March of 15, she was threatening to try to get more visitation unsupervised, correct? I know she tried to say that she had more rights than what she did. Right. And that was concerning to you? No, because I informed her that she does not have those rights. Okay. And so, both Jake and your mother were lying when they said they shared any information they got from that Facebook, and specifically when Hannah was talking to Tess and said that she wouldn't sign papers ever, they'll have to kill me first. I've never seen that message. Never seen it. You indicated that you didn't know that Jake was recording. You also indicated, of course, that he's very opinionated and insults people about the cleanliness of their homes and those sorts of things. Um, you knew that he was going to an attorney, correct? Yes. Okay, so he told you about that. I knew that he was going to uh, an attorney to have his seven days on, seven days off for just to be on paper. Right. And you also knew there was concerns about how Sophia was when she came home from there. Not to my knowledge. Okay. You were with him various times when he would pick her up or drop her off? A couple of times. Okay. And in particular, and we heard this here in the courtroom, um, when Sophia get, got into the vehicle the one time, you you confront her and say, why are you so filthy? Yes, I've done that many a times with Sophie. 
Are you Do they not know how to give you a bath or put clothes on you? Yes, I've said that before, Sophie. Okay. Many a times, not just for picking her up there, but for my brother. I used to joke with her all the time, call her a dirty butt all the time. She got a kick out of it. I, I don't think she laughed on this occasion. Do you recall her laughing? I don't remember. So you weren't doing that for the benefit of the recording? No, I didn't know he was being, re I didn't know my brother was recording. Um, and then, you were there another time with them, and you say, you, it's you, your mother, Bullvine, Sophia, and Jake. And you say, can we get out of here, okay, before Chris and little Chris and all of them start coming up here? And then you say, come on, not, no, not past Chris's. Don't go past Chris's. No, we're not, not that way. And then your brother asks you, which way we going, George? And you say, that way. I don't remember that conversation. Well, it was played in the courtroom. I remember hearing it here, but I don't remember the conversation when it took place. Okay. So you remember hearing it? I remember hearing it in here, yes. Okay. Any reason you can think of why in February of 2016, you want to hurry up and get out of there before Chris and little Chris and them and all them start coming up here? I don't have any reason as to why I would want to be in a hurry. Okay. I just, I don't remember a reason to be in a hurry. Okay. And to not go past Chris's? I don't have a, I don't remember why. remember looking through uh, the books at the tattoo shop, correct? Vaguely. Okay. You did not arrive at the tattoo shop with a piece of paper that you wanted them to put on you, no. right? Okay. No, I did not. Your dad did, right? I don't know on that one. My dad's been to that tattoo shop seven, eight different times. Okay. Specifically regarding the scorpion. I don't remember him getting that one put on him. I don't remember if I was there or not when he got that one. Okay. But you were together in June of 2016 at the tattoo shop. When I got both of my tattoos from Sean, my dad and I was there. But I don't remember anybody else getting a tattoo but me on that day. Okay. And so you look through kind of like, whatever, you look through to see if you have any, if there's any ideas, right? I vaguely remember flipping through some pages. Okay. And you're getting a Cummins tattoo covered up. Yes. Cummins diesel tattoo. Yes. Okay. So you're a hunting and diesel fanatic. Yes. Um, not a gambling fanatic. I wouldn't say I'm a fanatic, but I'm a compulsive gambler. I mean, I bet on everything. I'm not going to say I'm a fanatic about it, but I have a bad habit of betting on everything. Okay. Like betting on what? Anything and everything. Just I, give me an example, because this is... Cards, the first we're cards, pool, dice, horses, cars. I'll bet on if it's going to snow today. It's anything. Okay. But you don't play pool or anything like that? I shot pool when I was younger, yes. Okay. You're getting a Cummins tattoo covered up. Why not just get a better Cummins tattoo like your brother did? Because my brother didn't get a better Cummins tattoo. He had his messed up Cummins tattoo altered to make it look better. There was no altering of mine. Okay. Certainly, you could have chosen anything to cover it up. He's got a band of flames and stuff. It yes. would have obviously served to cover that up. I assume I could have put anything on it, but I just wanted the Cummins C off of me. Right. And you approved the skull with the eight ball in it. Sean recommended it, said it was the easiest to cover it up, so I let him the go with it. The eight ball? Yes. Yeah, you chose the skull, though. He drew it on there and said, do you like the way it looks? And I said, yes. But it started out as his idea. I just approved it. Okay. And obviously, you would not have approved it if it was unicorns. Probably not. Probably not? Probably not going to approve a unicorn. 
And isn't it true that when you were looking at the books, you the skull was the one thing that you wanted? The eight ball was his idea. I don't remember saying I wanted a skull or anything. I just wanted him to pick something that went together. And you have to help me. How does a skull and an eight ball go together? Almost every gambling theme has skulls and cards and dice and pool balls and anything like that. Okay. And why three aces instead of four? I don't know that. Sean picked that. The surveillance system that you guys bought in March, I think actually your credit card was attempted to be used to buy that, and then um, Jake's card was used in March of 2016. You got a three-year warranty, and you indicated that you, your grandfather got robbed. Yes. And therefore, you um, took that system down to him. Yes, my mother wanted us to take it down and take it to my grandfather. Okay. To basically deter anybody else from wanting to kick the door in. Sure, and I mean, is there a reason why you didn't just buy a different surveillance system for your grandfather? I don't know on that. She just wanted us to take that one down and put it up for him. And you never bought a new surveillance system for your house? No, she never bought another one. I mean, you guys are leaving your mother home alone with your children pretty regularly, right? Yes. Okay. Not concerned about that? I've never been one to like a security system. But you've had one everywhere you've lived? Yes. My Bethel mother, Hill? My mother did, yes. Okay. You lived there. I lived this there. This was your house. But it, it was, was not in my your system. name and your brother's name. But it was not my system. It was my mother's. Okay. You and your brother bought it. Yes, for my mother. For your mother for the house, yes. for the protection of your house, your property, and all of the people in it. I can't say why she wanted it, but that probably as good a reason as any. And then your grandfather gets robbed. Yes. Your grandfather who deals drugs. Yes. And you take the surveillance system over there. Yes. Instead of buying a, a new one for him, or even replacing the one that you have. Yes. But somehow or other, that actual system, the DVR part, ends up in your burn pile at Peterson Road. I don't know how it wound up there. All kinds of mysteries. I don't know how it wound up there. You didn't take it down from your grandfather's? No. Last time I seen it, it was on his house. Speaking of your grandfather, um, you indicated yesterday that had you known he was as ill as he was, you would have never gone to Alaska. Correct. Okay. However, at the time that you came back from Alaska, having your first trip up to Alaska, you indicated to the agents that you weren't sure if you were, you weren't even 100% sure that you were gonna go back to Alaska because both of your grandfathers were in very poor health. Correct? Correct, but I didn't think they were at death's door. Well, that's odd because you told the agents that your grandfather on your dad's side was given three months to live and that your grandfather on your mother's side, this hero, mentor, person you love so much, had been given one year to live because he was rotting out because he had been paralyzed since he was 17 years old and he had a hole in his spine and an infection had got in there and there was no fixing it. Do you remember telling the agents that? I don't remember that? saying there was no fixing it, no. And my grandfather told me before I left that he was perfectly fine. Again, in May of 2017, when you sit down with the agents, you told them that he was given one year to live, and therefore you did not know that you were going to go back, that you had to discuss it with your family and decide what you guys were going to do. 
I don't remember saying the one year to live. I remember saying something about discussing if we were going to move up or not. But I don't remember saying the one year to live thing. Would it refresh your recollection to see a transcript of that? I'm, I'm not saying it didn't get said. I'm just saying I don't remember saying it. So you're saying it's possible you did say that? It's possible I said it. I just don't remember saying it. Was it a lie? No. I don't, I wouldn't. I, I don't, I don't know if I said it or not. I just know before I left, my grandfather told me that he was perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. But he died while you were in Alaska. I didn't think he was going to, though. But he did. Objection. And you didn't come back. I was advised not to come. You didn't come back for his funeral, and you didn't come back for your other grandfather's funeral. I was advised by my attorney not to come for either. You were advised not to come to the funeral of this man you loved so much. Yes. I thought you do what you want. Isn't that what you've told us? Yes. You do what you want. So yes. you're going to let somebody tell you not to come back. And why was it you shouldn't come back? Because Clark said the BCI would plant stuff in our luggage. Plant stuff in your luggage? Yes. Well, you guys know how to get around all of that. You're trained in this. You were, you were raised for this. There is nothing you can do to get around anything in an airport. Nothing to do to get around what? There's nothing to get around in an airport. You can't get around anything okay. in there. So they plant something in your luggage. What are you worried about? If you didn't do anything, why are you worried about any of that? That's why you would worry about them planting something so you're not framed. Oh, you mean planting drugs or something? Anything. And that's why you didn't come back to your grandfather's funeral? Yes. Do you remember telling us yesterday that your dad was kind of a sidekick of Chris's regarding the drugs? Yes. Do you remember at the border saying that you guys knew nothing of it? That part I do remember. Okay. That was a lie, wasn't it? The one and only lie that I told at the border, yes. Okay. So you told multiple lies at the border. That's the only one I believe that I've told at the border. Okay. <clears throat> so you said you guys knew nothing about it. You also said your dad has absolutely nothing to do. He's all the way against drugs is what you said. Yes. Okay. And that was a lie. Yes. And why did you lie? Because everybody on Facebook and Topics was running hand and her family through the gutter, and I didn't want more people thinking that they were drug dealers. Oh, this is good. So you were doing this to protect the reputations of Hannah. Yes. And her family. Yes. But you also denied that your dad had anything to do with drugs. And that has nothing to do with Hannah, does it? When he was doing it with Chris, yes. Okay. But he was doing drugs other ways, too. That's doing drugs, not selling drugs. Okay. But you said he was all the way against drugs. I'm telling you right now, is what you said. My dad is all the way against drugs. Don't remember if I said it like that or not, but I may have. Yes. Another thing you said is, if all this is what you're saying is true, that there were drugs and we knew about it, why didn't we just snitch against Chris Sr. in order to get custody. Do you remember saying that? I don't remember that, no. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Because that's what your mother testified was the first plan that she wanted to do, was to snitch on Chris and get rid of the head of the snake. I don't remember that. You don't remember what? Her saying that or you saying that? I don't that? remember me saying anything like that. I'm not saying I didn't. I just don't remember okay. Again, would it fresh your recollection to see that? 
I mean, if it's on paper, it's there. I just don't remember saying it. Okay. So it's possible you said it? Yes. You indicated yesterday, or you were asked yesterday, about why you didn't say anything when you got into the vehicle about the fact that you had just been interrogated for four hours. Yes. You'd just been interrogated, completely surprised, wasn't expecting to see BCI at the border, right? Yes. Okay. And you're confronted for four hours with pictures of bloody shoe prints, Picture of your mom purchasing the shoes? Yes. Ballistic evidence? Yes, even though I thought the ballistic evidence was BS, but... Well, of course you did. So, um, you get out to the vehicle. Your mom and your dad are already there. Yes. And at no time do you say, what in the heck is going on? They think we did this. They think you guys did this. You don't say any of that. I was concerned with my son saying that his mother was there. Okay, that's right. So, and you said yesterday, you were concerned because Sud said that they gave bovine medicine. That's another concern I had, yes. Okay. How much longer after you got in the vehicle was it before your brother and Sophia came out to the car? I don't remember on that. You think an hour is fair? Maybe. Okay. I can't say accurately. I just don't. He wasn't that. there for almost an hour, and his daughter Sophia was not there, saying that bovine was given medicine. You had an hour sitting there with your mother and father, and you didn't say a word about what had just happened. I don't remember if I talked to him or not. Well, you've got the discovery. Objection. Okay. You testified. Well, I'll, I'm going to allow that question. Okay. Did he answer it? I haven't been through most of the discovery. Okay. In actuality, You testified yesterday you did not say anything about what happened because you were concerned about your son because you thought he had been given too much medication. Yes. And then you took him to a hospital and they said everything was cool. There was absolutely nothing in his system. Yes. Okay. But that information didn't come until after Sophia got into the car because she's the one who told you. Yes. So while you're waiting for Jake and Sophia Presumably, Jake, to be released, because you don't really know, right? I assumed he would be. My, my thing was you guys were trying to frame us. Right, sure. But I mean, that entire time, you did not confront your mother about the shoes. I don't remember talking to her about it, no. Right. You didn't say anything about the ballistics or anything else that you had been shown. I don't remember talking and you about were told a lot, but in the answer the question. I don't remember talking about a lot, but I do remember talking about the ballistics. Okay. Not at that time you didn't. I don't remember what time, but it was shortly afterwards. Okay. And you knew you'd been told that your mother had admitted buying those shoes for you guys. I know they said that, yes. But you didn't confront her about that? I didn't ask her about it, no. Because okay. quite frankly, I didn't believe most of the stuff they said after they brought up the ballistics that pretty much told me they were full of BS. Yeah. How many 
times have you been stopped at a border by a team of BCI agents investigating an eight-person homicide of the people you claim to like? How many times in your life has that happened to you? Once. Yeah. You remember telling um, Chris not to talk to BCI? Yes, multiple times. Okay. And you knew that he shared with you what had been asked of him and what had been told to him and, and that sort of thing. Some of the stuff, yes. Okay. And you knew that he had told BCI that you were the Glock guy and that he had helped you purchase a 40 caliber Glock. I know that's what he said, even though he's mistaken on the caliber. Okay, but you knew that he said that, yeah. and you knew that a 40 Glock had been used in this crime. Not at that time, no. But you told him not to talk to the authorities. Yes, I didn't want him being dragged into this. And you said on multiple occasions you told him that? Yes. Okay. And you also Randa? I don't know how many times Randa, once or twice, I believe. Okay. And who else? I think that's all that I can think of. Uncle Danny? I don't remember Danny. I may have, but I don't remember that one. Okay. What about your grandmother, Rita? I don't remember if I ever told her or not. <clears throat> Going to this family emergency, that family emergency developed on the day that Special Agent Scheider sent you the picture of your brother holding that 1911 22 Walther Colt that was purchased at the Westland Mall the same day you purchased a gun at the Westland Mall. When he sent that picture to you, you told your mom, we heard the phone call, that Jake was going to call and say there's a family emergency so that you guys could turn around and come home. Yes. It's not the first time that's happened. It's happened a couple of times. Related to the investigation? Two particularly related to the investigation, but okay. we've done that. Okay. So it was an emergency when you see that we literally have Jake holding one of the murder weapons. In this case. I was under the assumption it was not Jake's gun. He said it was not his gun. And he wanted to get back to talk to Clark so he could get Clark to get BCI to quit badgering us. Interesting that when the company asked him or told him that they were going to keep the other driver driving, he said, well, that's the thing. It's an emergency for my brother, too. I don't know why he put my name into it, but one way or another... We both had to come back anyways, or I'd have no way to come home from Texas. Right. But you acknowledge, you guys called in a family emergency and returned <coughs> sooner yes. than you would have when Ryan sent you that. Same route, we just didn't stop to drop off five different loads. You came back early. Yes, about 10 hours earlier. You talked to us about your brother's eyesight. What was that? What is his problem? I don't know what it's medically called, but his pupils are uh, deteriorating. Okay. And that's why he can't drive at night? Not that he can't. He just can't see real well. I don't trust him to. Okay. So you would always drive at night? Yes. Your dad broke his back hauling cattle? Allegedly, he claims he has. I don't know 100% if he has or not. Okay. But he claimed he did. He claims he did. He told you that? Yes. Okay. And 
that was during while he was hauling cattle by himself. Yes. And he allegedly got pushed up against the trailer and the wall of the trailer. That's what he claims. Okay. Yet he still walked around afterwards. Yeah. And that was before that cattle, uh, the, your your trailer, the truck and trailer that you bought off of Bernie Brown burnt, correct? Yes, I'm not sure how far before, but sometime before. Okay. Either way, when you claim you fought your dad, in 2016, early 2016, that would have been after that had happened to him. Yes. Okay. Do you remember telling the agents at the border that your dad's a big old teddy bear? Yes. That he's not violent, you've never seen him be violent with anyone at all, period. When I said that I meant other people, I just excluded myself from it. Do you remember telling the agents that you and Jake were the only ones with good credit? Yes. And you testified yesterday that you, your mom would just use your credit card and never tell you and... She had the right to, yes. She had the right to, okay. But you certainly would pay attention to your balance and, and the statements and such to make sure you were. I never looked at the statements when they came in, though. OK. Um, do you remember having a conversation with your money where you are reassuring your mother that you guys are using your earnings at r &L to pay down your debt? And that you had just paid five hundred dollars on a credit card, and that you only owed fifty three hundred or forty eight hundred now, and not fifty three hundred anymore. I don't remember that conversation though. Okay. And do you remember discussing other times with her items that you had purchased, and or items that she had purchased? I don't remember that now. Okay. So you never paid attention to your balance or what was being purchased on your credit card. No majorly attention though. I didn't look at the invoices or anything like that. Okay. Do you remember your mom being defensive and saying that um, you guys would consider it snooping if she were to look at your statements? I don't remember that one either. Talk to me about your family meetings. They're really not a family meeting. I mean, you can call it that if you want, but it's just determine on who's going to pay what bills for the month or if this is owed or that's owed, who's going to pay the debt on the uh, electric bill or the water bill or groceries or when we were at Peterson, the feed bill. So you do pay attention to bills then? I don't look at them. She just says, this is what's owed on this, that's what's owed on that. And I would bring her in the cash money for my half, and she would divvy it up and send it in. OK. So again, I don't know that I'm calling it a family meeting. It's you guys that call it a family meeting. I mean, that might, I think my mom's called it that once or twice. OK. Uh, pretty much everybody who testified who knows your family has said that you guys have family meetings, and they've been present when it's been announced that you need to have Judge, a family meeting. Is this meeting. a question, or is she testifying? Yes, it's a question. We need to get to it quicker about the testimony. Can you re-ask that? Were you present in the courtroom when multiple people testified from the same chair you're sitting in, and they all said that they've been around you and they know you guys have family meetings? Yes. It's just about bills is all it is. Okay. So you never had a family meeting about whether you're going to move to Alaska? I wouldn't call it a family meeting, though. No. But you've talked amongst each other. We've talked about whether we should go or not, but I wouldn't call that a meeting. Okay. So
So you remember, again, being present in this courtroom when a call um, from your mother to you um, says, well, okay, as soon as you get home, we've got to have a family meeting. Yes, I remember that being played here. Right. And that was not about bills, was it? I don't remember what it was about. Well, it was about everything that's happened with BCI's I investigation. I don't remember on that one. I just remember hearing them here. Okay. You're, you say about what? She says about all of that. And you say, Mom, they ain't going to do crap. Now, do you think that's about bills? Probably not. Okay. Why is it important for you to have us not think you had family meetings? It's not really important. I just don't call it a family meeting. It's Obviously, just, your mom calls them family meetings. I can't help what she calls them. I don't call stuff like that a family meeting. If we talk about a vacation or something, is that a family meeting? No. I mean, if you're meeting about it, yeah. I don't see it like so a boardroom meeting. you also nothing, discussed whether you're going to move to Missouri. Not really discussed. That was kind of like a dictatorship I was going and whether they left Alaska or not. Okay. And then from Missouri, you wanted to go to Ohio. Because I didn't have the job that I thought was in Missouri. It ended up being in Ohio. Okay. And you missed your family, I think you said. I missed Chris, yes. But then a few months later, you're talking about wanting to move back out west somewhere. Yes, over everything that was being said on topics in Facebook. Okay. And how did you know what was being said on topics in Facebook? My brother monitored it like daily. It wouldn't quit going on about everything people were saying. Okay. So they told you about those Facebook things? Not really told me, just he would conversate and I would overhear him where we were in the truck. You indicated that I don't know. I mean, you've had a few spats with your parents, and, and uh, some of those times you thought you might leave the house, correct? You drove Three. down to Kentucky and then realized you didn't have money to put in the gas tank, so you turned around and came back. Yes, that was the first time. Okay, and then once you were married with Tabitha, you... Twice with Tabby. Twice with Tabby, you yes. thought about leaving. Yes. So you had all this money in the safe that you had access to. Why didn't you just take that money and go? This was after me and Tabby split up that I had that amount in the safe. Okay. That bug detector, you indicated that your dad had a bug detector and two GPS trackers? Yes, he bought them for Chris Sr. He bought them for Chris Sr.? Yes. And when was that? Early 2015, I believe. Okay. And so if he bought them for them, did he give them to him? They technically used them together. And how do you know that? My father told me. Yeah. So, you heard the conversation you had with your mother here, that you said, when I get home, I'm ordering my mother friggin' bug detector. Did he tell you that they uh, said we had one of them too, that we had a detector that picked up video cameras? Bunch of bull crap. I had a bug detector. Your mother agrees it didn't pick up cam video cameras, it picked up, and you said, no, it didn't pick up freaking listening, it, 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 it didn't. It picked up freaking listening devices and stuff that freaking law enforcement would place in your house. 
Your mom says, it picked up bugs. And you said, yes. Tracking devices, anything that was for a listening device. It didn't pick up freaking surveillance cameras. You indicated that you had a bug detector. Yes, I played with it. It was my dad and Chris's, but I played with it for like two or three weeks. Okay, which is coincidental, of course, because you've seen our timeline of purchases where in uh, April of 2016 or March 2016, a bug detector is purchased with your credit card. And I didn't know that until this. Right. Okay. If you already had a bug detector, why would you buy a new one? I didn't buy a new one. Why would anyone buy a new one? I don't know. I didn't know anybody else bought another one. I just know that my dad bought that one. Pretty for big per purchase on your credit card. I didn't know it was bought on there. For someone who makes the majority of the decisions in your house, you didn't know a lot. If you want to look at it that way, you can look at it that way. I just I didn't know that they bought it on there. And you remember indicating that of the four of you, your mother was the one that should get the best attorney. Yeah. So that she could take care of the children. Yes, they were with her five days a week and we're already used to her. Just like if you guys got killed or apprehended on the night of the homicides, you wanted your child to go to your mother as well. Not for that. I was not there or involved with that. Okay. And who was involved? At this point, I only know my mother and brother. Can you see any situation where your brother alone could have done this? I can't say, that I never would have believed he would have done it. Okay, but I mean just physically. How would one would accomplish that? I don't know. No lookout, no getaway driver, nobody to shoot from the outside and shoot from the inside. I can't answer that. I don't know. Do you remember telling Jake that the family has spoken? Yes. Okay. That Beth Ann couldn't live there anymore? Yes. And that mom didn't want her on the complex? Yes, I remember that. Okay. So all this time that you say that you, I mean, t today <laughs> and yesterday, act like you could barely stand your family, you actually very much were together with them, moved to Alaska with them, moved to Missouri with them, moved to Ohio with them, talked about moving in 2018 with them yet again, correct? Yes. Okay. You remember telling your brother that you should go to BCI and tell them that he'll, he'll rat you guys out because he's the biggest rat there is. Yes, I remember that. Okay. And do you remember also telling your mother, let me tell you something, I love you. The only reason, and I'm sorry, you're going to hate when I say this, everything that you and dad have ever gotten in trouble for with them mother frickers, the only reason they ever got away with that crap was because every time somebody caved, everybody crumbled. I ain't caving, and I ain't crumbling. Do you remember I saying that? I don't remember them exact words, but I do remember roughly the conversation. Okay. And that was played in open court. I think so, yes. Okay. And is that your philosophy? You don't cave and you don't crumble. Not for what I believe you're trying to say it as. Well, I don't specifically some... you're talking about anytime they got in trouble with law enforcement because somebody cracked. 
I don't believe you should plead out to something you didn't do. Sure. But they did do the things they pled to. In fact, from, they did way more things than they ever pled to. From my understanding, they pled out to actually Having stolen property? I think it was a receiving charge in the beginning for the first one with my father. Yeah. For having stolen property? I think it was either receiving or theft. I can't remember which. Right. And he committed that offense? Not the first one that he got in trouble for, no. And which one was that? Uh, it was over motorcycles or something like that, from my memory of it. Yeah. Was a, there's no conviction for... I was a kid of that. Yeah, there's no conviction for motorcycles. Cash. Sure. You heard. Well, well, the jury will disregard the prosecutor's comments. You heard your mother testify that she pled guilty for stealing the stuff from the Walmart and other department stores with your father. Yes, that they did do. Okay. And that they were initially charged, but actually not completely prosecuted for the Rocky Boots, which they also did do. I don't remember what they got for that, but they, uh, my father's actually stole the Rocky boots. Right. Yes. Those are the only criminal charges they have. I was under the assumption there was another one according to my father, but... Can you tell us, um, George, what is jumping title? Can you say that again, please? What is jumping title? Um, <clears throat> my words might be different than yours, but it's say I buy a vehicle or something and I just don't put it in my name and I sell it to somebody else. That's my understanding of it. Kind of like what happened with the vehicle that was bought for the murders. I don't know on that one. Okay. I just know I loaned my dad the money for that truck. I didn't know what he was using it for. Well, you knew he was buying that truck from your uncle, Cyrus. Yes, yes, I know he was buying a truck for him, yes. Okay. And isn't it true that you didn't want him to buy that from him because you were worried that you were buying it from a relative um, in intending to use it for the murders. No. And your testimony was that Chris Sr. was somehow involved with that truck? Chris brought my dad down to the house to pick the truck up the next day and they both left. My dad drove that truck and Chris drove his silver Ford. Okay. So when you woke up the night after the homicides and you heard your cousin, Katie, testify that your dad showed up with that truck for the first time <coughs> the morning after the homicide. <coughs> then she's not telling the truth either? I'm not saying he didn't take and give it to her. I know eventually he gave it to her. I just didn't well, know when he gave it to her. Well, but he spent the night at your house, right? I, I mean, he spent the night at your house. Yes. Yeah. So when did he leave and go do that? I can't answer that. I don't know. You didn't see him leave? I didn't see my dad leave, no. You didn't see him come back? No. No. Your statement at the border was that you guys all got up, and you and Jake left, and you got called back, and your dad turned on the news. I just remember getting up and going tear a building down. I don't remember anything else. Okay. But at no point did you tell the agents at the border that your dad left that morning? I didn't know he left that morning. Um, 
you recall being asked by the agents at the border what trucks you owned at the time of the homicides, correct? Don't remember if they asked that or not. They asked you what vehicles everyone in your family owned. They might have. Okay. I just I don't remember it. And you certainly did not mention that vehicle, did you? I don't remember if I did or not. You don't remember if you told them about the truck that was used in the homicides? I don't remember, no. I don't remember which trucks I told them I had or if they asked, I don't remember. You told him about the 2007 Chevy Duramax. That's the one that your brother wrecked, correct? Yes, that was my primary everyday driving truck. Okay. And you told them about him breaking his ribs and your uncle breaking everything, right? I might have. I don't remember if I told them that or not, but that sounds like what happened to him. Okay. And that uh, your brother had the Dodge that he's got now, the Dually. I don't know if I said Dually or not, because at that time I don't know if it was a Dually or not. And that your dad had a red dually, 07. That's accurate, yes. Okay. And when asked what Jake had, the 09 silver gray dually, which I'm assuming you guys searched too. That's what you said. It's possible it was a dually already at that time, I believe. Okay. Because he converted it to a dually, right? Yes. It didn't start out as a dually. Technically, it's a three-quarter ton. And you said that your dad's truck was a 07 3500 single cab? Yes. And yours was an 07 2500 four door? Yes. And you also talked about you all own diesels except for the Suburban you just bought for your mother. It's in your name, but you bought it for her to drive. I don't remember mentioning the Suburban. I might have. Okay. And that was the Suburban that uh, you guys were driving in at that time? Yes. And you also talked about the Ford Excursion that she had previously. I might have. I don't remember talking about the Excursion, but I probably did. Okay. But other than that, you did not talk about any other vehicle? I don't know 
if I did or not. But do you know if I'm referring to like when I got searched or if I'm referring to 2016? 2016. Um, at that time, I was owned a lot more than that. Well, it wasn't just you owning. It was anyone um, in the family. Owned. I mean, everybody in the family was owned more than that. But those were just our primary drivers, the ones that we used on a daily basis. Okay. But the fact remains that you did not mention that vehicle that your dad bought with your money from your Uncle Toddy. No, I did not. And you indicated that you were worried about your mother trying to take custody of bovine from you at some point, correct? After being in Southwester, yes. Okay. But in 2016, you just signed that piece of paper without ever looking at it? At that point in time, she'd never threatened to try and take him from me. Okay. But then, when you were worried about getting arrested again in 2018, when you say you were worried about her taking custody, you were going to get the best attorney for her so that she could have custody. And you signed some documents to that end too, correct? Yes, and there was another set in between that. There was another what? Another custody document in between those. Okay. I have no other questions, Your Honor. Redirect. follow-up questions. It's probably been a long couple days for you, hasn't it? Fairly. Um, George, did you ever see Jake buy the 1911? No. Did you know he owned one? No. Did you go up on Union Hill Road and participate in these murders in any way? No. Did you plan these murders? No. Did you know they were going to happen? No. Did you know after the murders that they, in fact, your family had been involved? No, not until my rubbish proffer. And did you know, uh, did you ever go out to Left Fork Road where Ken was killed? No. Has anybody paid you anything for your testimony? No. Has anybody given you anything for your testimony? No. Did the state offer you a plea bargain for your testimony? No. Are you telling the truth? Yes. Your life is on the line? Yes. Are you telling the truth? Yes. As you answer to God? Yes. Thank you, Judge. Jack. Anything further from the state? Yes, Your Honor. What happens to you if you come in here and admit that you and your brother and your father went up to Union Hill Road that night and then out to Left Fork Road that night and slaughtered perfectly innocent people who lay asleep in their beds, two of them with babies in the bed with them, that from all testimony were actively nursing their infants. What happens to you if you come in here on that stand and admit to that? Do you want me to answer what I feel should happen to anybody that would do that? I want to know what happens to you if you come in here and admit that. What should happen to anybody is they should have death given to them.
And the biggest difference you agree between you and your brother is that when he does wrong things, he tells about it, and you don't. When we were children, yes. I have no other questions, Chuck. Anything further? No, thank you very much, Chuck. You may step down. No, no. Can we go back over there? Yeah. Over there? Over. Thank you. So, does the defense wish to call another witness at this time? No. We're still on the state side of the case. We're going to take a uh, recess, ladies and gentlemen, for about 10 minutes. Uh, at, uh, at 20 till a little bit more than that, about at 20 till 4, we need the jury to assemble at the jury room and be brought back up here at that time. While we're at recess, uh, you're not to discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else, not to permit the case to be discussed with you or in your presence by anyone, not to form or express an opinion concerning the case. Do no research concerning the case as to the facts or as to the law from any source at all. Do not read, listen to, review any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all. Have no contact with the participants in the case, including uh, parties, counsel, or Witnesses, does counsel for either side have anything you wish to say before the no, jury? You. All right, so we are in the assess then until 20 till 4.
Is each side uh, ready to have the jury brought up? Yes. State ready? They look ready. Go ahead. <laughs> may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we, we uh, as, you, as you know, we've taken a, just finished with a defense witness that was taken out of order. The state has not rested its case yet. And so we're now shifting back to the state side of the case. Uh, does, the, uh, does the state of Ohio have another witness to call? We do, Your Honor. We're going to call the special agent Schneider. solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God. Yes, I do. You be seated. Thank you, Your Honor. You've been up here a few times, Special Agent Scheider, but for purposes of the record, would you care to introduce yourself again? My name is Ryan Scheider, and I'm a Special Agent with Ohio BCI. And for the record, are you the uh, lead agent assigned by BCI? to the uh, road and mainly Gilly homicides? Yes. And during the course of your uh, duty, did uh, you have any uh, firearms checked, be traced, anything like that by the ATF? Yes, we did. And would you tell us uh, what that is and how you do it and why you would do it? So anytime we recover a firearm at a scene, a crime scene, or during a search warrant and we don't know its whereabouts, we have the ability to uh, access an online portal through ATF. We can enter the make and model of the firearm as well as the serial number and it will tell us the first transaction history of that firearm. So it will say, let's, if it was imported into the United States, it would show who the importer was and then it would show what retail location sold the firearm and to the individual that purchased it. That's all that it shows about that weapon. Okay. And is this only done for uh, guns recovered in crime, search warrants, things like that? Correct. It would be fair to say you guys don't get on there and just say, hey, Rob Junk bought a new gun, let's go check out what he has or anything like that? Correct. Okay. And are you familiar with the, uh, what an ATF Form 4473 is? Yes. And would you tell us what that is, please? It's the form that a purchaser of a firearm would fill out. So basically their legal information uh, at the time that they're doing a transaction for a firearm to run the background check. And during the course of your investigation into the Rude Manley and Gilly homicides, were you able to uh, obtain any uh, ATF 4473s or E-traces? on, say, a Caltech uh, 
TMR-30, a uh, Walter Colt railgun, <coughs> caliber 22, and a uh, rifle purchased at the Western Mall gun show. Yes. And here you would just mark the state's exhibit. It's going to be quadruple M number one. And if you tell us what that is, please, Special Agent Shiner. This is a E-Trace report from ATF, and it is the question firearm is a Keltec PMR 30 22 caliber with the listed serial number. It lists the purchaser as being George Wagner and the date of purchase 131 2015. And it's George Wagner, the defendant, based on the date of birth. Without objection, Joe. The basis of the objection. I'm going to hand you what is, uh, that to give me a little bit uh, out of order here, so I kind of like get in a hurry when I mark these, but I'm going to hand you what is marked as quadruple M number four, and tell us what this is, please. This is three pages of an ATF 4473 form. This is for George W. Wagner and with the date of birth and social security number would be the defendant George Wagner. And the purchase date is 131.15 and it is for a Keltec PMR 30 pistol 22 caliber. And does Hey, does it indicate uh, where the sale was? Yes, this form says the, on page two of six, says the sale at a gun show or other qualifying event, and it says name of event, Westland Gun Show, I believe it's CNE, Columbus, Ohio. Now, are you familiar with uh, gun shows? Yes. Maybe for those people that maybe don't own guns or get into guns or anything like that, how does a gun show operate? There's a hosting area. Typically, it's a fairgrounds or a large building. Uh, it could be a flea market, and there could be licensed gun dealers that are there selling firearms, or there could be private individuals that are selling firearms. And in order, like, say, if I buy a uh, firearm from a licensed dealer, say if I go out to the bait house, or I go to Rural King, or go to the Waverly Pawn Shop, if I buy it from a dealer, I have to fill out one of the 4473s have a background check, show my operator's license, that uh, go through all that, do I not? Correct. Okay. And I want to hand you what is marked as State's Exhibit Quadruple M number three. If you would tell me what that is, please. This is the ATF E-Trace report for the Walter Colt Railgun 22 caliber this would be for the firearm that was recovered out of the Flying W Pond, the concrete buckets. This is the murder weapon. Uh, it lists the purchaser as Jacob Wagner, Peterson Road. And it says the purchase date was January 31st, 2015. And just for the record, is that uh, the same date indicated on State's Exhibit Quadruple M4, the ATF 4473 form on the uh, Keltec PMR 30? Yes. Yes, we're looking January 31st of 2015 on the E Trace as well? Yes. I'm up here, I'm going to hand you what is marked as quadruple M. <coughs> Again, that is a little out of order. That number two. And would you tell us what that is? This is two pages of a ATF 4473 form. The purchaser being Edward Wagner, Peterson Road. It is dated January 31st, 2015, and, and listed as a long gun for purchase. And it purchases, or, I'm sorry, it says the sale of the gun at, at gun show. It says name of event, Westland Mall Gun Show, Columbus, Ohio. They say as far as a uh, long gun, again, for those people that maybe haven't ever bought a Firearm Does a long gun uh, refer to either shotgun or rifle, something like that? Per this form, it would be a rifle or shotgun. Basically, not a handgun. Correct. 
I would, uh, and did you obtain those uh, trace forms and 4473s uh, in the course of your investigation? Yes. Okay. And they were uh, recovered and taken in your direction? Yes. And you've maintained them in the uh, records and uh, your files for this case? Correct. And Special Agent Shiger, I also want to uh, hand you what is marked as quadruple M number five. Would you tell us what that is? This is a Westland Mall vendor list dated January 31st through February 1st, 2015. Was that prepared at your direction, recovered at your direction? Yes. And what I would like you to do, if you would look on there, Is there a listing for a Kyle's gun shop on there? Yes, there is out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And I want you to compare that compare that to a quadruple M number three. And is there a Kyle's gun shop listed on there and how? This would be the E-Trace report uh, exhibit MMMM3 for the Walter Colt Railgun 22. This is the purchase date of January 31st, 2015. And it says the dealer information is Kyle's Gun Shop out of Cincinnati. That's the same uh, Kyle's Gun Shop listing the same address on your uh, list of vendors for the uh, Westland Mall Gun Show. Yes. Same address and same name. And for the record, with the items you just testified to in reviewing those, the firearms contained and mentioned therein, all purchased on the same day of January 31st, of 2015. Correct. No further questions, John. Like the defense may cross examine. You have a question. You may step down. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ryan. Are there any additional witnesses for the state today? Yeah. All right. Um, it seemed, would seem to be a good time to recess them for the evening. Uh, one o'clock tomorrow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will need you to come back tomorrow at one o'clock um, to the jury room from where you'll be brought up here by uh, by court employees. Uh, you'll be going home uh, uh, until you're back here in the jury box. Do not. Uh, Discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit this case to be discussed with you or in your presence by anyone. Do not form or express an opinion concerning this case until it's finally submitted to you for, for deliberation and verdict. Do not do any research concerning the case as to the facts or as to the law from any source at all. Do not view, read, or listen to any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all. And have no contact with any of the participants in the case, including parties, counsel, uh, or uh, witnesses. And of course, you'll be leaving your uh, notepads on your seat and you're wearing your back home and back to home. Uh, you're, you're coming in late tomorrow, and, and it may be a short day. Uh, it, there, there's quite a few things to be done in the case that are, do not involve the jury, and uh, uh, the court will be working on those, and counsel will be working on those, and we will determine tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about the scheduling, but it's very important that you be back here tomorrow uh, at 1 o'clock. Does counsel for either party have anything that you wish to put on the record before we recess until 1 o'clock tomorrow? No, thank you. Then we are, we are in recess until 1 o'clock tomorrow. The jury to assemble at the jury room at that time.
1 through 10, it has the same line for last time in the language. Okay. At the top of each one, which we would object to. And what, then what does it have? The Wagner oh, laptop. Right. And I think this is the laptop seed that Montana ordered. Um, so we would object. And perhaps they can make that change before it goes to the jury. Um, once again, we have context um, comments about what the conversations or the recordings are about. Um, however, only AAA 6 involves my client, George. In the context comment, it says he's heard in the background. And likewise, on AAA 9, it says George Wagner's overheard in the vehicle. I think that's the jury's determination as to whether that sounds and what he said. So we would object to that, those comments in the context. Your Honor, for purposes of this, again, I think it's important for us to give the jury some an index of what they're looking for. And I would imagine the more pertinent recordings are the ones where George is involved. It doesn't say what he said. We did have, you know, we do have transcripts where it details what was said. We're not suggesting those go back. But again, this helps them isolate or indicate. Additionally, again, because Ms. Eveslage has listened to these voices for a long time, it's, you know, she's able to offer that as evidence that, you know, identifying who is engaged in the conversation. Because I don't think the jury otherwise has any way of knowing that. Well, it kind of comes down to this. You know, somebody testifies to something, they've testified to it. Now, we all have, you all had witnesses that testified to things. Well, do you write a summary of your testimony and give that to the jury? Or do you rely on their collective memories of what was testified to? You know, I think we're going down the wrong road if I let the jury have written things that a witness testified to. Ms. Eveslage testified, I think, too, that it was George and, or whatever, George and Jake or not. I don't remember. But that particular one, if that's what she said, that's the testimony. But to put it on a written document and send it back, I think, gives more emphasis on that particular testimony than other testimony that we've had that we don't have written documents on. Can I present just a counter-argument real quick? I think the purpose is to be, again, of assistance to the jury in directing them to potential recordings that they want to listen to. So you can get a situation where the jury could be like, I want to hear the recording where George was yelling about, you know, get out of here before Chris gets up here. They can look at those indexes. Now, that doesn't tell which one of those recordings that is. It doesn't say anything about what he's saying. But it does show, okay, out of these ten, there's two where George is on. Let's listen to those two to try to find out why. It's more of a guide or an index to help them. Again, substantively, the evidence is the recording. Instead of having the jury just have to be like, well, which one is it? They have to listen to all of them again. These are a guide or, again, it just gives them some context of where to look for what they may want to find. Well, but it does put her in a position of trying to identify the talkers. I mean, she said that. I agree that she did say that in her testimony. I don't remember that particular one, but I do know that she said that in some areas. I don't know. What's the counterargument to that to help sort of index who it is? There are a couple of different points I'd like to make. One, again, I'm mindful of what she just said, true, but I don't think Jake identified the recordings. He's the one who made the recordings and would know who was there and who wasn't. I don't recall him identifying those recordings. Number two, the recordings mostly involve Jake, Angela, and sometimes George in the background. That's my recollection. There may be other people such as the victim here. 
But certainly the jury has heard Jake testify. They've heard Andrew testify. And now they've heard George testify. So with respect to identifying voices, which is what this is. Are these in the vehicle? Is that what we're... No, Your Honor. These are the surreptitious recordings that Jake was making. When he got into the vehicle two times, on two different occasions, George was there. I just covered these with George, and he did not deny that he was there. In fact, he said he was there. One of the times, he admitted that he made the comment about her being filthy. And the other time, he said he doesn't know why he said those statements, but he was present in the courtroom, and that was played, and he acknowledged that he made those statements. He just doesn't understand or can't offer an explanation as to why he wanted him to hurry up and go away before Chris and them came up. I think he didn't recall that. Well... He didn't recall that. No, that is not his testimony. His testimony was he heard that, and he did not have an explanation. He heard it, but he didn't remember the conversation. We don't need to argue that. That's not pertinent to... The bottom line is there is no dispute that that is George Wagner's voice on those two recordings, and this is simply offering assistance to the jury. If I'm a jury, how do I know what that is, where those calls are? Well, okay. Let me back up. If it just indicates John Doe and Sam Smith conferring or John Doe and Sam Smith, that should be enough to be an index. That is. But I don't think there should be anything about the subject matter, what they're talking about, you know, in a visitation setting or arguing over X or Y or discussing this or that. I don't think any of that should be in there. That's not right. If it's just an index that you're up to and she did testify as to who the persons were, then I'm going to rule that that's all right. But not... You know, this context stuff can be a slippery slope. We start, what were they talking about and that kind of thing, so... Yeah. So I don't know if you can clean those up enough to... We'll change the Wagner laptop to laptop and other recorders. And then on the other introductory things, look at that because if it has more than a name, I'm probably not going to let that happen. Was that the AAA stuff? That was all the AAA stuff, Your Honor. So you're going to do some work with that. That's another one we'll have to look at tomorrow, I guess. Triple B? Is Triple B... We're going to come back to Triple B also. Yeah. Triple B withdraws. So there's other things. We think Triple B is the original timeline. Did you say they're being withdrawn? Yeah, we had discussed withdrawing that just within the last five minutes. And because she referred to it, we want to put it in. And there's also, there are other exhibits with it and those receipts. Do you have that? We're going to have to come back to it. We don't have everything. What did you say? You just want to break it until tomorrow so we can do it? I don't care. Break it. Just to clean this up. That's fine. If that's okay with the court. Well, you know, if that's the most efficient way to handle it, that's all right with me. I just want to try to get through this if we can. For sure. We need to be done with this. Yes. Do you guys have objections to Triple C? There's a couple in here that I'm looking for, and it's going to take me some time. There's 24 exhibits, but I'm looking for a couple of the transaction records. We had some objections at the beginning at 8, but if we cut out this early, can we begin at 8 tomorrow and get these? Yes, Your Honor. Because we have the jury. You know, if we told the jury to come in at 1, I hate for them to come in at 1 and set until 2 while we try to finish up some stuff. We'll be here at 8. All right. Yes, Your Honor. Is there anything further we need to put on the record tonight? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.